following is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. Charlotte Motor Speedway, one of NASCAR's fastest tracks, where a steamy Saturday will make a tough test for driver and car even more difficult. Today, a Starfield NASCAR Nationwide Series field takes that test for 300 miles, looking for a very special victory in the NASCAR version of Homecoming. Charlotte, where NASCAR lives, works, and for just a few days a year, races. A chance to impress the hometown crowd, to thank the boys at the shop. Welcome to Charlotte, America's loudest, rowdiest homecoming celebration. Welcome home. Homecoming weekend taken to a whole new level. The opener of a huge weekend of auto racing here on ABC. Today it's the History 300 in Charlotte for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Live from the Charlotte Motor Speedway in Concord, North Carolina. I'm Alan Bestwick. Welcome to Charlotte. So what are we going to see over these 300 miles? Well, we're going to see a field of big NASCAR stars and some star drivers who are going to be big NASCAR stars in the near future competing on one of the fastest tracks on the circuit under very difficult hot weather conditions in a race that it reached in history holds true, always has some little drama or twist of plot thrown in at the end that makes it hard to know who's going to win and how. Let's start our coverage today with some of the top stories in the field. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is the defending NASCAR Nationwide Series champion. He's won both of the races held so far this season on mile-and-a-half tracks like this one. March 10th, he outran the great Mark Martin for the win in Las Vegas. And Friday the 13th of April, well, that was lucky for Stenhouse at Texas Motor Speedway as he fended off Denny Hamlin on a late restart for the win. He's also the most recent race winner in the Nationwide Series, dominating last Sunday's event at the Iowa Speedway for his third win of the year. Stenhouse starts fourth today. He's with our Dave Burns. Championship leader Ricky Stenhouse knows it's hot out here today. Do you have any concerns over car or driver fatigue today? Nah, I think we'll be all right. Um, you know, I think uh, you know, it's just part of the game, but uh, it's the same for everybody. So I think we got a, a decent setup on our 40 Go Boost Mustang. It's... Um, you know, it's a little slick out there. We were a little tight in practice, uh, you know, a couple days ago, Thursday. Um, so I think we got it worked out. We were really loose in qualifying, which uh, generally plays out uh, pretty well here. So uh, we, we qualified on the pole last year uh, and get, was really, really tight in the race. So if we can tighten up just a little bit, we should be all right. Now, last year, you had the advantage of also being in the cup car uh, for a variety of reasons. Do you miss that this year? And if so, how much? Oh, heck yeah, I miss it. Um, you know, that was a lot of fun running uh, the Wood Brothers 21 for Trevor and those guys. Um, but, uh, you know, we've we've been able to focus on our nationwide car this weekend. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big priority to go out here and win another championship. And, and that's what we're gunning for. But, uh, you know, we got to take it one race at a time. But uh, definitely miss being in that cup car. That was fun. Well, he's got a good qualifying spot. And we'll see what the championship leader can do with today's event. All right, Dave, thanks. A third of the way into the NASCAR Nationwide Series season. And a look here at the drivers who have won multiple victories so far in this campaign. Stenhouse, his rival for the title, Elliott Sadler. And we focus now on the driver in the center, Joey Logano, a three-time winner this season, including the last two straight races he's entered at Talladega and Darlington. Logano goes for three straight and four overall from the first starting spot today. He's with Shannon Spake. And, Alan, it is the third pull of the season for Joey Logano. Okay, Joey, finish this sentence for me. In order to end the race where you're starting the race, you have to do what? Oh, there's a lot to that. There's a lot to that answer. Um, you know, I, I think we're going to be all right. I think I got a really good uh, game stop car. Um, and I think a lot of it goes to show for qualifying. I think my balance was really good in qualifying and be able to get the pole. So anytime you can get, uh, you know, a good lap down with a balance that's not good, it shows that the car has speed in it. So um, I'm, I'm happy about that. Uh, I got an awesome suit. I got an awesome car, and uh, we're going to go out there and win this thing. Joey and his awesome suit will be chatting with us during the race as he's our in-race reporter. If you want to ask him a question, go to ESPN.com, keyword, in-race reporter. Shannon, thanks. Look forward to chatting with Logano during the course of today's race. A points penalty for Elliott Sadler has given him some ground to regain today. That's next on NASCAR Countdown from Charlotte. Sadler earlier today meeting with the families of service members who were killed in action in Iraq. Of course, this Memorial Day weekend, the NASCAR community proud to support U.S. military families. Part of a campaign that will be ongoing through the summer months. More on that coming up shortly. 
Charlotte, North Carolina, home to the NASCAR Hall of Fame, where all the greats of the sport are being enshrined. The brand new Hall of Fame, only a couple of years old. Wednesday, those who will be inducted into the shrine in 2013 were selected. Buck Baker, a 46-time winner. Back-to-back -back champion in 1956 and 57 was elected. Cotton Owens, a winning driver and 38-time winner as an owner, prepared and fielded cars for David Pearson, Junior Johnson, and more. Herb Thomas, 48 times he won in just 228 starts, a winning percentage of an amazing 21. And Leonard Wood of the famed Wood Brothers, who will join his brother Glenn in the Hall. Leonard with 96 wins and 117 poles as a crew chief. And then there was Russell William Wallace Jr. You know him better as Rusty, a 55-time winner, ninth all-time. Those 55 wins in the era of only racing 30 or so times a year. The 1989 champion joining champion crew chief Andy Petrie and I for the call of today's race. Congratulations. What's it feel like to be a Hall of Famer? I'm incredibly humbled. I'm incredibly excited. I didn't think I'd get in this early. I really didn't. I mean, you had great names out there, Benny Parsons, Fred Lorenz, and just to name a few. And I got in. I well, I'm pumped up. I really it's am. It's well-deserved. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it, I agree. Well-deserved. Who better than a Hall of Famer to ask about why big names always seem to win this Charlotte race? It's always the big names that win here. Why? Well, it really is. This is a fast racetrack. It takes a great handle and car. you got to have a great car. you got to have a lot of horsepower. And generally, when you have good cars and good horsepower, you got the best team. In order to have the best team, you got to have the best drivers. So it all comes together, and that's what you got to have here at Charlotte to get the job done. Big races do bring out the best in people and this is the second biggest race for this series daytona probably the, the biggest but this one is too this is a big one people want to win here you bring your best cars i always used to bring new race cars here try to have my best engines and have my crew as good as they can be as sharp as they can be to try to win this one and when great drivers are at their best great things happen there are some drivers on their way that to becoming what they hope are big names in nascar racing who hope to upset that apple card a little bit today mike massaro is with one yeah that would be austin dillon the nationwide series top rookie at the moment but he did draw from the experience of one of those established drivers that being Kevin Harvick I saw you working very closely with him during practice on Thursday what did he show you that could help you today you know just uh, it's real line sensitive especially with the temperature and when the temperature rises the track changes and uh, we'll be trying to keep up with adjustments all day but Harvick really helped me with the line around here um, I was kind of fighting a tight race car and he helped me figure out what I needed and uh, I think we've got a good uh, Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet Good luck this afternoon. Thank you. Austin Dillon looking for his first career Nationwide Series victory and also trying to return the famous number three made famous by Dale Earnhardt back to victory lane here in Charlotte. Dave Burns. Mike, Danica Patrick has been doing the back and forth between the Cup Series and the Nationwide Series this weekend. Danica, for this race today, bigger benefit or kind of more hectic going back and forth? We'll see, won't we? <laughs> um, I think overall it's a good thing. Um, I... Uh, you know, we had a good qualifying run um, today in the middle of those two cup practices. So uh, I can't say it's a bad thing. So hopefully we have a good day. You know, I, I think that the big deal here is going to be that it's hot. It's slippery. The end of cup practice got really slippery. Um, and hopefully the car is consistent. I just think that's, you know, that's going to where it's going to be where it's really going to pay off today is to uh, have consistent runs. So hopefully we have that and we can get a good result for the GoDaddy car. I feel like... Um, I feel like we've had good weekends going and haven't finished them off, so I hope that this is one of those weekends we can finish off really well. She sure started it right, Alan. Third in qualifying today. Absolutely, Dave. Keep an eye on that seven car this afternoon. Among the headlines this week in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, a penalty levied against Elliott Sadler and his team after last Sunday's Iowa race. Sadler's car found to be lower than allowed in post-race inspection, so his crew chief, Luke Lambert, was fined $10,000, and Sadler and the team docked six driver and owner points in the championship. That leaves him 34 Four points or positions on the track behind rival Ricky Stenhouse beginning the day. Shannon, he's got some ground to make up. Yeah, Elliot, 34 points out of first. I know that there is a lot of racing left to go, but still, how does that point deficit affect maybe how aggressive you plan to be moving forward to get that win? You know what? That, that's a really great question, and we kind of decided this week, let's just go race and win some races and let the points do what they may. Um, we can't be worried about chasing points or worried about what the six cars doing. We had a whole lot more fun, and we won the races at Phoenix and Bristol and we definitely got a car good enough to do that today. The one main financial car is really good in practice on Thursday. And uh, that's a good question. But we, we need to be aggressive, take chances, and, and keep ourselves in position to win races. We had a great chance to win Darlington and Iowa doing those things, and we're going to try to keep that up today. And, of course, Elliot hanging out with his biggest fan and good luck charm, his son Wyatt. Guys?
Shannon, thanks. The six points and the penalty levied against Sadler's team kind of light in the realm of NASCAR penalties. Why? Well, the, the penalty or the infraction was very minor, and it, it was in the wrong direction for performance. I think NASCAR took that in consideration that this wasn't intentional at all. They had a jack screw that backed off during the race and caused their car to get low in the right rear corner, which is the exact opposite of what you'd want happen to happen at Iowa. And it is a light penalty, but think about what happened the very last race last year at Homestead where you had Carl Edwards, he had Tony Stewart going for the championship. They tied. Six points might be small, but man, it could be everything in the world in the last race. So we'll see how that plays out as we go down the road in the Nationwide Series. A fast pre-race show for what is a race at one of NASCAR's fastest tracks. Charlotte, the opening ceremony, coming up next. Everything we do as Americans is a gift. Every activity, whether it's working, playing, or racing. Every day we live and every lap we run is a privilege. Freedoms that we, the people, have not earned ourselves. They were earned for us. Earned by those who served before, those who serve now, and those that paid the ultimate price. We get to do this because of what they have done before and what they're out there doing today. So as we begin the summer season, let's celebrate, let's live, and let's race. To honor them, to thank them. The real heroes that wear the real uniforms. It's Memorial Day weekend, America. Let's go racing. so proud to wave the stars and stripes, especially on this Memorial Day weekend as the NASCAR Nationwide Series goes racing in the History 300 at Charlotte. NASCAR unites an American salute kicks off here, an industry-wide campaign to support U.S. military families. You can find out more at nascar.com slash unites. You'll see the red, white, and blue over many of these race cars in today's field. We go trackside now for the opening ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, Please rise and remove your hats as the 120th Fighter Wing from the Montana National Guard presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as retired United States Army Chaplain Archie Berenger offers today's invocation. Shall we pray? Our Father, we thank you for this beautiful Memorial Day weekend you've given us. We thank you for the privilege of living in a free country where we have the right to pursue the American dream of life, liberty, and happiness. I ask your very special blessings upon both drivers and teams here today. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would be with them in a very special way, that you would grant them nerves of steel, a steady hand, and a heavy foot. And Lord, may we have a safe, enjoyable, action-packed race today, one that would bring this great crowd to its feet in awe and in wonder as we've never seen before. For we ask this prayer in the name of the one who won the greatest race of all time, who defeated the devil and conquered death, and today sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty in heaven in victory lane, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was, is, and the greatest champion of all times. Please welcome Unite Universal Music Recording Artist Crystal Keith as she performs our national anthem. Who say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight of the ramparts we walked were so gallantly streaming. that our 
the drivers to buckle it in buckle in for an afternoon of hard hot work at blazing fast speeds the engines fire for today's nascar nationwide series race after these messages and a word from our abc stations NASCAR means Charlotte Motor Speedway, where the NASCAR Nationwide Series will fire them up in just a moment. Be part of the conversation during today's race at NASCAR ESPN. Let us hear from you. We'll go back and forth on no items going on and items of interest to you during the race. That is how you find us on Twitter. Some more stories from Pit Roller before they fire them up. Shannon? Well, Alan, for Penske Racing and for team owner Roger Penske, no bigger weekend than Memorial Day weekend. Of course, he has the two NASCAR races here and the Indianapolis 500 at the Brickyard. 1,400 miles of racing between his teams over the next two days. And while Penske has 15 Indianapolis 500 wins, he's never won here at Charlotte and at the Brickyard on the same weekend. Now, his two drivers in the field today, Sam Hornis Jr. and Brad Keselowski. They are looking to start the weekend off with a win for the captain. Mike? As he assesses the challenge he's facing today, Travis Pastrana says this is the fastest track he's been on since coming to NASCAR. He got a true taste of that during qualifying when he lost control of his car. That spin relegated Pastrana to a 42nd place starting position this afternoon. So, how does he approach it starting at the back? He told me moments ago, very carefully, because he doesn't want to make the same mistake twice in the same day, Dave Burns. Kyle Busch's crew chief, Mike Beam, finished second and first in the Nationwide Series here last year with driver Carl Edwards. So you'd think he'd have the winning setup for today. But Mike told me that the differences between Carl's car last year and the cars that Kyle is driving this year, they're so great that some of the good things don't apply all the way across. Even so, would you want to bet against six-time Nationwide Series winner at Charlotte, Kyle Busch, and his crew chief, Mike Beam, Allen? No. That would not be a winning proposition, Dave, but it'll be interesting to watch Kyle look to get his first win aboard his own equipment from the 12th starting spot today. Denny Hamlin is nearby Kyle as well. Casey Kane also in that neighborhood on the starting grid. While up front, you've got Joey Logano and the youngster Austin Dillon with Danica Patrick and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in row number two. Steamy conditions for today's race. You see the crews clearing the grid, the drivers buckled aboard their machines, and it is almost time to get this 300-miler underway to begin the Memorial Day weekend action for NASCAR here in Charlotte. Please welcome the cast of History Channel's Pawn Stars, the old man, Rick and Corey Harrison, and Chum Lee, as they deliver the most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines. Almost time to go and get this action started here on this very quick mile and a half racetrack in the sports hometown of Charlotte, North Carolina. Use the old Johnny Carson line. This racetrack is fast. How fast is it? Well, we've got numbers to back up how fast it really is. Yeah, since this new car has come online for the Nationwide Series, this has been one of the tracks where the speeds have been the highest. Uh, we see that in this category, Charlotte dominates. Speed here, since they have repaved this track, it's been about six years since this pavement was put on here, but it's held up so well, and the grip is where a lot of the speed comes from, and this track is very smooth, but today it's going to be really hot. And you got real hot temperatures out there today. you got fast race cars. Cars, and that can lead to a lot of spin outs, a lot of crashes, things like that. This is the hottest track temperature that these drivers have competed on all year long. The hottest today. So they're talking about it. Everybody's paying attention about it. 
We're talking about it. We'll see what happens. It's fast. It's hot. So that means it'll be fickle. We'll see what kind of trouble the racetrack might bring upon these competitors today. And one other thing that's a trend here at Charlotte, the old twist of plot near the finish. Last year's races, both of them here for the Nationwide Series, had a pass for the win within the final five laps. That was Matt Kenseth passing Carl Edwards with three to go last May for the win. Yeah, what can happen here is you can have a dominant car all day or all night long, and you have to adjust on it, though. This track is demanding. It changes all during the race, and if you don't keep up with it, you can find somebody stealing this race away from you. Like Carl Edwards did when he got by Kyle Busch on a restart with five laps to go last October. Will we see the late twist of plot today? Well, that's been the trend so far this season in the Nationwide Series as well. Another trend will follow. Joey Logano winning races. Our ESPN in-race reporter on the pace laps next. Three wins in only eight starts so far this year. Joey Logano to the checkered flag first. Perfection at its best right there. It has been three wins and eight tries this season for Joey Logano aboard the Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota, including the last two races he has entered. The young man from Connecticut originally, really on a roll in the Nationwide Series today, and he's on the pole for the History 300 in Charlotte. He's our ESPN in-race reporter for the day, Rusty. Dial him up. Joey Logano, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? Stand four, I got you. All right, Joe, we've got an ESPN mailbag question that comes from Travis in Denver, Colorado. The question is, what are the challenges of driving during the daytime compared to the cup race at night? Well, we found out here a few minutes ago in uh, cup practice before this race starts here, uh, it track changed a lot towards the end with this heat. It's really hot out, so it's just really slick out there. Everything basically gets worse. Entry gets freer, center gets tighter, and then uh, exits kind of goes one way or the other, but it definitely goes one way for sure, so uh, we'll be slipping and sliding with our hands full for sure. All right, buddy, you've won a lot of races, a lot of different style racetracks, and a lot of different tracks, but right here in Charlotte today, how special would it be for you to win right here in Charlotte in front of all those crew members that come from Joe Gibbs Racing that can come to the rest of those tracks and watch you? Huge, huge. I mean, you know, Rusty, it's just a huge deal to win at a home racetrack uh, that, that all your guys work at, you know, right down the road. It's huge for everyone in this whole race. So uh, we want to bring it home. We've been uh, doing a good job last two races we won. So we're going for three in a row, and I think I got the game stop card. I can do it. All right, buddy. Have a great race today. Thanks for talking to us. Now, Andy's going to speak to your crew chief, Adam Stevens. Hey, Adam, Andy Petrie in the booth. Great job qualifying for you and your team. But we have seen it be a challenge sometimes to have a great car in qualifying and have a great car in the race. What kind of changes do you expect to have to make on this car so he can drive it in victory lane when it's over? Wow, that's a great question. Um, you know, qualifying is about speed for one lap, and uh, a lot of that is up to the air pressure you choose and uh, if the driver hits his marks. Um, Joey obviously does a great job of that for us. I think uh, for the race today, with the track conditions and the heat, it's going to be about minimizing your mistakes. I think uh, behind the wheel and here on pit road, the guy that makes the least mistakes is going to be up front at the end. Well, good luck with that. You got the right guy behind the wheel to get it done. So good luck, and uh, thanks for talking to us, Adam. And our over-the-wall camera today is being carried by the rear tire changer for Joey Logano in the 20 team today. Chris Taylor, I know, Chris, you'd like to get a win in Charlotte before all the rest of the team, too, right? Oh, absolutely. It'd be uh, awesome to go to Victory Land in this GameStop Toyota in front of all of our friends and families and our co-workers. But uh, hopefully we can get three in a row for Joey here. Yeah, it'd be a great day. Stay cool down there. Good luck. All right. Thanks, guys. Chris Taylor going over the wall for Joey Logano today. We have some terrific onboard views for you for today's race. Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., the championship leaders carrying our 4D GoBoost camera. Danica Patrick inside of row two, the GoDaddy.com camera. The pole sitter Joey Logano with our Toyota on board. Brad Kislowski, former winner here with the Dodge camera. Justin Allgaier, the nationwide insurance camera. Kevin Harvick with the Hunt Brothers Pizza camera. Cole Witt with our Chevy on board. And from the back of the pack, Travis Pastrana with the nationwide insurance camera. Good looks at today's Charlotte race. So, mile and a half track, 300 miles. It is 200 laps the distance today. The fuel window here is uh, an interesting number. It divides into that 200 lap thing, kind of 
evenly. Yeah, it does. And uh, we will probably won't see it work out just like that because of caution flags. And one small thing to keep an eye on, they're having a global rally cross event uh, later on today. And that event is set up on the front stretch in pit road area. Well, they were doing some practice last night. And where the cars do some of the jumps, they scuffed up the racetrack a little bit on the front. You could see some of the patches in there. It has not appeared to be any problem whatsoever. We'll keep an eye on it, but just by way of full disclosure, it's there, so you know. And a final reminder before the green that our broadcast today, available in Spanish by activating your SAP button on your television. Coverage today presented by ESPN Deportes. All right, Rusty, a 90-degree day. Turn one, lap one of this Charlotte track. A handful? Uh, I think it's going to be a handful. That's what I'm waiting to watch. I mean, these drivers are all jacked up. They're ready to go. They're going to fly down this front straightaway, Andy, in their turn one side by side. And you know as well as I do, that car on that inside gets really loose. If it gets too tight, that car on the outside, it's called a major aerodynamic problem, and we can see it today. Yeah, if you get too greedy, you can get trouble down here on the first lap. It's a long race, though. I don't believe I would be trying to pull any smooth moves into turn one. Turn one, lap one. Coming up, Logano and Dillon lead them to the green. Stacked up in that outside lane. Dylan a little cautious into that turn one, lap one. They see some back in the pack there, three wide. Looked like Kyle Busch was one in the middle. Stenhouse to the outside in the six. Boy, Dylan's got himself sandwiched right in the center right there. That's one of the toughest spots on the racetrack. Comes to the start finish line. But he did a good job with the Shark guys really giving away. Didn't feel comfortable on the outside getting in turn one. Real happy with Austin Dillon, how he treated that move right there. Uh, and Danica Patrick got a great start right there to come out in second place. Kevin Harvick on the move, 33 car. And for second place. Yes, this is Charlotte in May, not Indianapolis. Sam Hornish and Danica Patrick. A little run in at Talladega a few weeks ago. Okay, there's just no love lost between those two right there. And Sam wants to get in front of her and get gone. Well, those tires are sticky and they got a lot of grip to them. You got to get all the positions you possibly can early in this race because when these tires get a bit warm, it's hard to make those passes. Now about Stenhouse, he's already working the top, got the momentum off of turn two. Working Danica Patrick here for third. You know, Andy Stenhouse is one of those fellas who got a little loose in qualifying and also said, hey, once this race gets going, my car feels good. It seems like the car's a little loose in qualifying. It's just right for the race. We heard a lot of competitors talking about that after qualifying was over this afternoon. That's one of the reasons I asked Adam Stevens that, because they had got the pole with a good car, but sometimes it makes a car that's a little bit too tight to get it done with the race getting underway here and getting laps on time. Kyle Busch in that 54, a little trouble getting up off turn two on the bottom there. Slides in behind Brad Keselowski. Kyle Busch's car, I don't, that's one of the cars I want to look at today. He's had some problems earlier in the year in a mile and a half. This team's got a bit more time under the belt right now. We'll see if they got this thing straightened out. Supposedly, that Toyota engine, the nationwide engine, has been down on horsepower compared to the rest of them. And Kyle complained a lot about that at the beginning of the year. Maybe those guys have hopped this thing up a little bit for this race. Seventh place there, the side-by-side. -side. 22 Keselowski, 2 Sadler. Sadler going way up high. See how that works with Kyle on the bottom side. And that's one great thing about this track here in Charlotte. You can really work the top side of turn one and two and three and four. But it seems like it more happens down on the exit of turn four. We're going to spin off the turn four, like guys. Pastrana again. It is Travis Pastrana in the grass. Caution is out. I say again because he's spun in qualifying. Come on, come on, come on. All right, right to the box. Four tires. Four tires, guys. Four tires. Travis Pastrana started at the back of the field because of that spin in qualifying Andy mentioned. He was running 32nd at the time. And he's going to have to get some new shoes on that uh, that car after the spin well, into the grass. You know, he had a major spin in, tele er, in Darlington in practice. Didn't hit anything. He spun this morning. Didn't hit anything. Now he spun again. It doesn't look like he's too bad right now. He's good at spinning them out. I'll tell you that. I'm not hitting anything. <laughs> and that takes talent. On board. Well, I think that car's pretty loose, man. Guys, you 
know, he's, he's not yeah. he's not doing anything wrong, Andy. This car is just, it's like you said, they've got it set up way too loose for him right now. And one of the things is, is Pastrana's not run enough of these races, and none of them on mile and a half tracks to know what he really needs. So he may not be giving the feedback back to the crew so they can get this car tight enough for him. I think this is going to be a real learning experience, this race is. It's so slick getting in. The track's really, really hot, but we had no side bites for some reason. Well, that's the thing about the track. It's so slick. He lost a lap there, getting those fresh tires while the leaders came by. So Pastrana will be a lap down back in 41st position as we get ready to restart in a moment. Not believing we'll see any of the front runners on the pit lane here. Right? No, not after just six laps. They're uh, probably going to stay out. You might see some of the people at the back come in and make a few adjustments. So first caution is out in the History 300 at Charlotte for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. 32nd place at the time, Travis Pastrana went for his second spin of the day. But it, like he did earlier in qualifying, he got away with it, didn't hit anything, and he will continue on in the race. ESPN's coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series on ABC, brought to you by the Hatfields and McCoys. The feud begins only on history. Coming to the restarts. After the early caution involving Travis Pastrana, he has rejoined at the tail end of the field. Joey Logano inside the yellow car, Sam Hornish outside at the green flag. Ready, green flag. Gets clear. Stenhouse six, trying to get second away from Hornish. I'll tell you what, those restarts, two in a row now for Joey Logano. He's on his game, and he just pulled right away, starting the inside of that track. He's done a good job these last two times. He's got his hands full with Ricky Stenhouse pretty soon, though. Stenhouse got a good run through three and four. Guys, just about every single race we've been seeing Ricky Stenhouse's car, as the race goes on, it just gets better and better and takes off. Whoa, had a little bobble air up in the high lane. And we're starting to see that now out of him. And new third place runner, Kevin Harvick, slides by Sam Hornish. 33, green and white car. Oh, you just see those guys come into turn three. And Danica Patrick into turn three. That really high line. We watched in practice. We are watching Austin Dillon, how he really hung that car way out against the wall and picked up so much speed, almost grabbed the pole position. You're going to see a lot of guys way up high in that turn three and picking a lot of speed up today. That line today seems to be more important than it's ever been at this track. Austin Dillon gets really loose right there, has to back out of it a little bit. I really like the style I'm seeing out of Danica, though. The way she's driving the, the racetrack, she's backing off a little bit early, getting in the corners, and getting back to the gas, carry momentum off. And I think that's going to pay off on a slick racetrack. Tight up front, Logano challenged by Stenhouse for the top spot. Kevin Harvick right there waiting to pounce. Uh -oh. Whoa, hang on. Uh, maybe that wasn't the right time to pounce. He didn't lose a lot of ground. Here comes Harvick, though. He's going to make a move on, on him. It's really hard to believe when you think of all the victories Kevin Harvick has in the NASCAR Nationwide Series that this is a track he has not yet won on. Yeah, I know. That's just a stat I can't get over that he has not won in this series here. So good everywhere in the nationwide car, and he's good here. We see Stenhouse down on him, getting hit turn three right there. Then now moves up, gets away from him. Boy, it keeps you so loose if you're the bottom car getting into turn one. We saw that out of Stenhouse just so long ago. Whoa! That is Robert Richardson in the 23. Fluid streaming up from behind that car from something. Now, bud, you okay? So you just set the fire extinguisher off just now. You see that thing go off, Andy? Yep, it worked. Yeah, I think it was the motor. It looks like it's got flames shooting out the back. Stop and get out, Robert. Okay, that's a heck of a shot. That's the first yeah. time I've seen in a long time flames pouring out. And you saw those fire bottles fire? Put that right out. NASCAR's got two big fire bottles in these cars nowadays. And boy, it worked in that one. Robert Richardson was running in 34th place at the time. 
And you see him there talking to the safety officials, and obviously there not being the urgency to hurry out of the car anymore after that fire suppression system. Watch this. Yeah, you can see the engine just blows up big time. And then he can't steer the car because of the oil on, on the track and getting on the tires. This is where you kind of worry about that fire, though, as you come off the wall. A good view from Pastrana. The worst possible place that can happen. It seems like it's always where they blow up. It's right there in the corner. Yeah, when, you're, RPM. when you're going the very fastest, and it sounded like it blew up when he let out of the throttle. And he was able, close enough to the wall, he could just glance up to it and really not spin and back into the wall or driver's side first, something dramatic like that. It's probably the best way to blow up if you're going to hit the wall. None of the front runners came in. Denny Hamlin did hit from back in 14th position, so we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. quick cautions here at Charlotte uh, the second one for Robert Richardson with an engine problem that has put some debris down on the racetrack under this caution none of the front runners pitted except Danny Hamlin who came in from 14th place Mike radioed in Alan earlier that the car was as he said pitiful he described the carburetor as skipping so they elected to change the carburetor under that caution period the good news is they changed the carburetor in about 45 seconds the bad news is they didn't put fuel in the carburetor the car stalled it took them a long time to get it refired they lost a long time here on pit road yeah they did a great job by changing that carburetor quickly but if they would have just put the fuel in it prior to Denny coming down pit road it would have fired off and took down pit road but it didn't they didn't put fuel in it uh, and so it wouldn't start up right away and lost a lap getting it going and he finds himself back in 37th position and as uh, Andy said a lap down to the race leaders getting back on the lead lap at the caution Travis Pastrana who got the free pass at this yellow The NBA playoffs continue tonight here on ABC. After an improbable run, the 76ers are a win away from a trip to the Eastern Conference Finals. They'll face Paul Pierce, Rajon Rondo, and a Celtic team looking to defend their home court. Game 7, Sixers-Celtics tonight, starting at 7.30 on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. That'll be a good one. Yes, sir. And a beautiful view of this spectacular racetrack from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. From pit lane to victory lane, every NASCAR driver counts on Goodyear tires. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Had a chance a few weeks back to take my dad to fly on the Goodyear blimp out of their one of their bases down at Pompano Beach, Florida. You ever done it before? I've never done that, no. You as a pilot, you got to do it. It was amazing. I've been looking for some things to do. That sounds pretty good, Andy. Huh? Sounds like fun. Tell you what, talk about Denny Hamlin a little while ago. I'd be willing to make you guys a bet that he'll get that lap back. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, I he'll mean, be uh, working hard to get that back. He came down pit road a little while ago while we were off air there and worked on that car a little bit more just on that chassis. Yeah, they're, get, they're getting a little bit of time to work on this car now because it's going to take a while to get the track cleaned up. Uh, oil dry, lots to be cleaned up after Robert Richardson's car had the engine fail going into turn one, went all the way around one and two and came to rest part way down the backstretch. It made a big mess. I'm almost all the oil. These cars hold up to about five gallons of oil in an oil tank. Looks like he lost almost all of it. Andy, we were talking a little while ago about that blow up. I've got to tell you, I've blowed in many engines up on the entry of turn one, and generally you go from the bottom of the track right to the top of the track and destroy the car. I watched how Richardson went into turn one. He was already up against the wall, out of the throttle. Then the engine blew. He just scraped that wall all the way around. I'm telling you what, if that's going to happen. It helped him a lot. Yeah, it helped him a lot. The soft wall technology, we don't talk about that enough. The soft wall really helped. All right, uh, going to be a couple more laps of caution here while they continue to clean up the oil dry and the mess from the Richardson engine failure. So we'll take a break, come back for the restart in the History 300 at Charlotte for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Joey Logano leads. The History 300 at Charlotte about to go back under the green flag. Reminds you to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. Cleaning up already the second caution in the opening 20 laps of this event. And now Joey Logano, who started on pole, will have a third different driver to his outside for a double-file restart. It was Austin Dillon on the initial start. It was Sam Hornish Jr. on the first restart. And now for the second restart, it'll be Kevin Harvick in the 33 to the outside of Logano's 20.
time we've seen a good restart on the outside. Harvick really hung strong up there. A lot of grip on the top of this racetrack. A lot of momentum also. Well, look at Harvick drive that thing down in the corner. And out of it with the lead. Yeah. First lead change of the race. Kevin Harvick to the point. I tell you, right here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, that's one of the most fun turns to watch. The entry of turn three. And when they come flying off that turn four, they get so darn much momentum up there and so much grip. Just watch Jimmy Johnson win those races in the last corner here a couple times in Charlotte with all that momentum. Denny Hamlin, by the way, restarted 37 the lap down after the carburetor change. Ricky oh. Stenhouse in the six had his hands full there. You see Ricky just get up there, lost his grip. Open the door up there to the bottom and just got that car way loose. It looks like it's just too free at the moment, but as these things start burning some fuel off, generally they'll tighten up a little bit. It's a good thing he had a good grip on the steering wheel. Right? Yeah, really. <laughs> I watched Stenhouse do that a lot this year, though, Alan. Just yeah. have him out of control and just stay wide open in the throttle and get away with it. Kid's got a lot of talent. We all know that. Side by side, fifth place, Brad Kozlowski, 22, James Busher in the 30. And Busher will grab that spot. And James Whoa. Busher now making the move on Stenhouse. Busher won that opening race at Daytona, kind of by a fluke, but he's run well this year in a lot of races. Yep. I was having a heck of a race at Daytona. Like, that was such a big race for him. I mean, to win the Daytona opening race, that was like one of the majors, that's for sure. And right here in Charlotte, I would consider this one of the major nationwide events also. This is a race that all these guys want to win in Gal. Just a really big race here, Memorial Day weekend. Last corner didn't work out so well for Busher. Kozlowski by him. Here's Casey Kane by him. Danica Patrick hanging with this group. Stenhouse looks like he's got his hands full, Dave. The day of battling the racetrack, the heat, and everything else. Right now, Stenhouse's car is loose everywhere. He said during the last caution, if we could snug it up about a point, we'd be solid. They've been talking about making a wedge adjustment that changes the balance of the race car. Try to get back in the driver's hands. There they are. And they're busy. I think most drivers would say, I need it tighter by more than one point. But with Stenhouse, the way he can handle that car, and he doesn't mind it to hang out and to be able to chase the back end. He can drive it that way. You know what? I don't even know what that means, one point. I mean, a lot well, of I'm drivers... Guessing, I'm guessing a scale of one to ten. Yeah, so I've got one round of wedge, two rounds of wedge, <laughs> or I'm real loose or just a little loose. <laughs> <laughs> Tell by that pitch. Yeah, that's board. right. <laughs> you see just how fast they're going down into turn one, over 180 miles an hour. Look at Stenhouse. Chasing it up the hill. Carry the momentum, though. Gain it on, on Hornish. Yeah, he's running the top side of that racetrack. He's really trying to get some bite up there. Ooh, ninth place here. Elliot Sadler going to grab that spot from Danica Patrick. Austin Dillon, remember, in that three, started on the front row. Falling back outside of the top ten, trying to work his way back forward. Riding with Justin Allgaier as the seven car went for a little slip in turn one. Shannon? Well, Danica Patrick, Allen, she was one of the drivers in qualifying that had that car on the snug side. It was great for her because she was able to start this race third, one of her best qualifying efforts. But the tightness has continued in this race, and it is giving her a problem right now. She knew today would be a struggle, a very, very long day as she's doing double duty. And right now she's battling tight conditions in that seven car. Yeah, one problem you have on a tight with a tight car on a slick racetrack like we have today, you got a lot of wheel in it. You got to make it, you got to turn that wheel and make it turn. And it, if that back end does break loose, it's a handful to get it back. Keslowski, 22, trying to get fifth place away from Stenhouse. You know, we talked earlier in our show about this is the hottest track temperature these drivers have had all year long. And after this first pit stop comes around, where they can get in there and get some tires on these cars make the adjustments that they need, we're going to see a different looking race. See Casey King back there behind Brad Keselowski. He's notoriously good at this racetrack, running the top side of the track. See him right now hunting on the bottom of late in the race. You always see him right up against that wall. 
trying to get all that grip. And I don't know if that comes from his open wheel days or, or what it is, sprint cars, midgets, to make him do that. But he probably does a better job on the top of these racetracks than any driver I've seen. Another one does that well is Casey Kane. You see him there in the 38. I watched him. He's been exploring this racetrack a lot. He's on the bottom now. I saw him earlier making some time up top. Kind of reminded me of what I saw last night over on the dirt track. He was running a World Outlaws car over there. And, boy, you really have to move around to try to find grip on those dirt tracks. Let me ask you something. Did I just not say Casey Kane? Or did I say somebody else? Because Casey oh, Kane's, Casey Kane's I what I meant. Stenhouse. I no, you were about we're Stenhouse. both agreeing for Casey <laughs> Kane. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Stenhouse has a little bit of that background, too. He didn't mind to, to, for that back end to hang out. Watching a lot of this good racing for position, but nowhere to be seen in all of this good racing for position. Hold my breath on that thought oh. for a second. <laughs> Nowhere to be seen in all this good racing for position is the race leader. Because Kevin Harvick, after he got by Joey Logano on that restart, has checked out. Harvick has opened up a two-second lead over second place Kyle Busch. Been a long time since Kevin's won a nationwide race September 2010. He's in the lead now. Tomorrow, the 96th Indianapolis 500-mile race. Intriguing storyline setting up for the day. Dario Franchitti, fastest in carb day, the final practice, but he's starting midfield in 15th. Ryan Briscoe on the pole for Team Penske, seeking another Ford Warner Trophy for the captain. The Indianapolis 500, telecast presented by GoDaddy.com. Coverage beginning at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, here on ABC. Can't wait to see it. We need the brand new cars up there. A lot of real fast speeds. 232 miles an hour in the straightaways at Indy. Fast speeds here in Charlotte today for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. This is the race for third. Joey Logano in the 20s started on pole. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the championship leader in the series. Trying to get that number three spot away from Logano in lap traffic. Tell you what, I just love this little hot slip racetrack. It makes for a great race. I mean... All these cars all bundled up together right here. Yeah, these three. Yeah, they're slipping and sliding. They're having a good race with these three cars. I'm just watching Logano get those left side tires down below that white line a little bit. I held my breath. Casey Kane, 38, trying to pass Logano for fourth spot, Shannon. Well, you heard Joey Logano, Allen, in countdown say he was pretty surprised that he got that pole. He said the balance was off on his car. So I asked him before he climbed to the car if he thought that he could keep that lead. car watching how Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is using the high line of the racetrack. Hear a lot of drivers talking about Ricky being able to go high. Shannon, thanks. So Logano shuffled back to fifth position now after leading the opening 21 laps of this race. Hey, when the car does two different things, when it's loose in and pushing in the center and loose off, that's what a crew chief doesn't want to hear. It's hard to fix it when it's doing two or three different things. Yeah, the driver says, hey, I'm just loose getting in the corner. I'm, in fact, I'm loose all over the place, guys. Yeah, that's one direction you can go to to fix it. But when you got to do two things, look, we get you scratching your head. In lap traffic, Justin Allgaier will try and take advantage of Austin Dillon. Allgaier 31, Dillon 3. Wow, that was close. Boy. Joey Gase in the 52. Looking to make a move around Angela Cope in the double zero. Not on the lead lap, the both of them. That looks like rush hour traffic on the 485. Gets a little thick around here in Charlotte yes, sometimes, it does. doesn't it? Brian Scott there in the 11 for Joe Gibbs Racing, running in 12th position. Dave, this three car started on the front row, but he's kind of back in traffic. Yeah, Alan, he got shuffled back early, really, from the line that he was in, not moving very well at the start. Has been trying to claw back, but a car that, according to the driver, is loose in and has no side bite on exit has been really giving Dylan problems. They've got some adjustments planned for the first pit stop. All right, Dave, thanks. Second place here. 54, Kyle Busch, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the sixth. We are keeping an eye on a slow car on the apron of the back straightaway. It's Joe Nemechek, who appears to be without power and coasting back around to the front. There's Nemechek's car. That's in the middle, almost in the middle of three and four now. 
trying to gauge by watching where they can make it back. It looks like it's going to be iffy. Yeah, I'm thinking we might see a caution flag here. We'll see. Joe was 18th at the time he slowed. So Stenhouse through to second spot. Here's Casey Kane, 38, to challenge Kyle Bush for third. I need to check will make it in. Weren't you guys having a discussion about Casey Kane being good at hunting yeah. different lines? And yeah, he's all over the place, man. He, <laughs> he really is one of the best, especially at this track of searching lines. I've seen him win races here from the bottom and the top. I was just getting ready to mention, let's get a camera on him because he's up there in turn three and four, scraping around the wall. And I look back down, he's on the That's bottom of the mean. track. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm just going to keep my mouth shut till he finally lays that baby up on the top side of the track. Then we can see the old Casey Kane come out. Casey to third. Kyle Bush looked like he had a little walk out of the back end there coming off of turn four. He'll slip back to fourth. Hey, look, guys, it's probably the most slipping slide I've seen out of the nationwide cars all year long. And if this is what a hot track's going to do, I think it's going to set it up for some good racing in the summer out of these guys. Drivers, I should say. Yeah. It's got to be tough racing in heat like this as a driver inside these hot race cars and maintaining focus all day there, Rusty. Well, it is. I mean, because your tempers, you know, start getting out of control. If your car's not handling, the first thing you're doing is trying to complain on the radio. Crew chief's telling you, calm down a little bit. We'll get on the next stop. Or calm down, you're fine. And the driver comes back and says, I'm not fine. Quit trying to pump me up. You see there, Casey Kane took that car all the way below the yellow or the white line on the bottom on the apron, getting trying to find some grip. Joe Nemechek did make it back around. He has turned into the Sprint Cup Series garage entrance and coasted behind the wall. So we stay under the green flag, and Kevin Harvick has left him. He's given up a little bit of the lead in the last couple laps, but almost five seconds on second place. Well, at this point, when you have a lead like that, I, if I was his crew chief, I would say, hey, there's no reason to really punish the car. You know there's going to be a caution. Something's going to happen. Just, just you know, chill out a little bit. Try to take care of the stuff, and uh, no reason to stretch out a big leader early in the race. Well, one thing I've noticed, Ricky Stenhouse right there, and I left your screen, his last lap by was a 31-14. He was the fastest car in the track, and Kevin Harvick has backed it off to 31-30. So, you know, a little bit slower right now than Ricky. But we know, notoriously, Ricky gets better as the race goes on. Think about Ricky, though. You can visibly see the way he drives his car. He's more aggressive. He's driving that car so hard. He'll first, find a way to make it go. Sorry, Andy. First move to pit road under the green flag will be Danica Patrick, who had fallen all the way back to 16th place after starting in third. Seven car headed all the way down toward Shannon. And Danica Patrick, as she makes her way into her pit box. Guys, she's been trying to move around, find another line on the racetrack, trying to find some speed out there. I told you earlier that she was tight on about lap seven. Well, she did radio in and say that her car was going to the loose side. Sunoco fuel and four tires for the seven of Danica Patrick. Who now needs the race to stay green through the complete cycle of pit stops to try and work back around? in her favor. It shouldn't be many more laps before we see all of the leaders on pit road. And you know what, what they just said about Danica's car starting out tight, sliding in front end, then all of a sudden it goes from sliding in front end to sliding the back end. That seems like a car that's not balanced real well. We heard earlier that she was messing around with the brake balance, putting some more brake pressure to the front of the car, trying to tighten that car up a little bit. Sam Hornish is on pit road. We've got a car in trouble on the front straightaway, smoking the double zero car of Angela Cope, and the caution is going to come out just as Kevin Harvick slowed to try and go to pit road. He managed to dive back out onto the racetrack. Shannon? Sam Hornish Jr., Allen, he says he's tight on the top, even tighter on the bottom as those guys go to work on the car. He is down and away. Mike Bliss also on the pit lane under the uh, green flag before the caution came out, we think. There is the double zero car of yeah. Angela Cope, who has brought out the third caution of this race already. And the caution coming out just as Kevin Harvick was looking to make the move to the green, to the, the pit lane for a green flag stop. I thought he had already committed to this. He got slowed way down. I thought he had already made the move to pit road, but just at the last second, you see that cone, he comes around the track to stay out. Can't hit the orange cone. Nope, can't hit it. And if you're going to make a pit stop, you have to pass to the left of it. If you're going to stay out, you have to pass to the right. There is Cope out of her car. But it will be a much shorter day than hoped for for 
Angela in her fifth career nationwide series start. So now all these front runners will get a chance to come to pit road under the yellow flag for the first time. Harvick, Stenhouse, Kane, Kyle Busch, Logano, Keslowski, Sadler, Busher, Allgaier, and Dillon. Your top 10. Pit stops at lap 54. Dave? And they'd all like fresh tires and Sunoco fuel, every single one of them, including second place, uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Right now, he's in the middle of the screen there. His car loose. He cannot charge the corner. They'll make a track bar adjustment for that. As for Casey Kane, top of your screen, he is uh, the third place car. Loose in, but so good, they want to leave it alone and see what the sticker tires do on this run. Shannon? Well, Kevin Harvick, he is down. He says it was perfect in three and four, and just a tick tight in one and two. They are not going to wait for fuel, just a four tire change, no adjustments. Alan? Looks like Harvick is going to get off the pit lane holding the lead. Casey Kane gains the spot. Gano gains two. A nice effort by Brian Scott's yeah, team Scott. on the pit lane. We'll see how this shakes out for Danica and for Sam Hornish as the scoring resets. Caution for the third time here in Charlotte. It's the History 300 at Charlotte for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Check out NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. We're working caution for the third time in this race after the engine in Angela Cope's car kind of made a mess of the front stretch, and they're still cleaning it up with all the oil dry. So the caution came out just after green flag pit stops had begun. We'll reset the order of some of those involved in a minute. Also affected by the pit stops, Kyle Busch, who came in fourth and left 11th. Change four tires here. Looks like they had a little bit of trouble on the right side, right rear. Looks like they didn't get all the lug nuts off the first time, and that really kills the pit stop. Then they come around to the left, and it looks like they're making a chassis adjustment. Pulling the spring, spring rubber out of the left rear, which takes a little bit extra time. Watch the spring rubber still sitting on the ground when the car drives away. There it was. Yep. So, this is what takes you from 4th to 11th. Yeah, 18-second stop. That's going to do it. All right, so as we get uh, doubled up for the restart, seven car of Danica Patrick shown in 28th position and is getting a wave around to get back on the lead lap. We've had one stop in this whole thing. We're only a small portion of the way there. Let's not get all riled up. Let's just keep our heads down. I'll drive like hell on the start. And uh, hold yourself for a caution, get it back, and, and go racing. Driver picking up the team instead of yeah. the team picking up the driver. And like, usually, like I remember when she first started, what, she was nothing like that. She was apologizing, and now she's kind of guiding this team. That's, she's come a long way. Also getting a wave around to get back on the lead lap, Sam Hornish Jr. and Mike Bliss. Remember, they stopped under the green just before the caution. Problems for Michael Annette, Dave? Mike, uh, Michael Annette was running in the 18th position during that run. A misfiring motor. They've stopped twice on pit road. They believe they have a plug wire that was off back on. He says it sounds a little bit better, but they so far have not had a chance to change tires on this race car. He had that problem last week at Iowa, too. They had sure a plug did. wire off. Yep, had a problem similar to this. Up front, Kevin Harvick, Casey Kane for the restart. <laughs> New leader, Casey Kane. They drive so hard on these restarts with those fresh tires. I think Harvick saw a potential problem brewing off the floor, and he just kind of squeezed out the problem. It was interesting to me. Kevin chose the outside lane. Last time he used the outside lane to get clear of Joey Logano on that restart, so he chose it again. This time it didn't work. I guess that's going to have him rethinking that strategy if we have another one in these leading. Back in traffic. 
54, Kyle Busch. Oh, uh -oh. spinner, Travis Pastrana. Don't hit anything. Don't mess up your record. And it looks like Denny Hamlin's going to benefit of that. He'll get the free pass. And I've been watching Hamlin this whole race to see when he was finally going to get that back. I'm going to tell you something. Pastrana's getting good at this. So how many times Dude, is this now? I have no idea what's going on. I'm so freaking bummed. I'm sorry, man. What the hell? He's got some tire marks on the right side, though. Travis is running in 32nd place down a lap. He's just very, very frustrated. They can't figure out what's going on. Uh, he was really struggling before you saw that car go by. I probably put the tire mark there, but it, he was struggling. That car was extremely loose. I mean, maybe like they had a tire one now. The darn Keep going. Keep you know, going back up. It's Keep like going. they got just tons of air pressure in these tires. You can hear the tires squalling coming through the corners. Yeah, you could hear the tires squealing way before he lost it. Uh-oh. Look out, guys. Pit crews out there picking up all the lug nuts and things that are dropped from the pit stop. And the, the officials, as always, vigilant, watching the racetrack and making sure those crewmen get out of harm's way when that car broke loose. Yeah, if you're standing on pit road, you better not turn your back to traffic. <laughs> it's like rule number one, right? Uh-huh. You know, Andy, I've driven cars that have been so loose like that, and they feel like they have no downforce in the back. It feels like a lot of air pressure in a right rear tire. And you just got to get a little air out, get some wedge in these cars, make some adjustments, and get the car in the ground. Because right now, they got to go overboard and tighten this car up more than it probably needs to be for him. Because Travis just can't feel what's wrong with this car right now at all. He needs a lot more time behind the wheel. He's getting very, very frustrated. We know he's a world-class driver and everything else he drives. But this is the hardest thing he's ever had to learn. So Pastrana rejoins the fray. As we work the fourth caution of this race already, we're not even 100 miles in. The History 300 at Charlotte with the yellow flag out. ESPN's coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series on ABC. Brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Call now to get a quote. Going to be a Rusty Wallace exhibit in that NASCAR Hall of Fame. Our pal elected for enshrinement in February of 2013. The first ballot Hall of Famer, Rusty, joining Andy and myself for the call of today's race, the History 300 at Charlotte, which is under caution for a fourth time today. And an unscheduled stop at this point for Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who gives up third spot on the racetrack, Dave. He may have run over something, Alan, and he's having transmission issues. He said uh, something felt like it hit my feet from the floorboard, and then he felt a big shake and vibration from the shifter lever on in through the transmission. So they're looking everywhere right now for the championship leader. This is a bad situation. It's kind of crazy. It, it, it makes you think that maybe something happened inside the transmission that caused the thump he felt on the floor, or vice versa. I, I, just kind of hard to diagnose that one. I'm sure the team is kind of confused trying to figure it out. I've had big hunks of rubber come off the racetrack and fly underneath the car and cause that, Andy. But to continue doing that, continue vibrating, that's something else. So that is going to put Stenhouse back to about the 28th position for the restart. Mike Kelly is crew chief. And yeah, the best case scenario was uh, that very thing, Rusty, that they may have picked up some rubber, got on the drive shaft, which would then sling off inside there and hit the floorboard. And it would also cause a vibration. Uh, that'd be the best case scenario. Uh, the worst, case, drive it. worst case scenario is they've got a, a problem with a part inside the transmission, a gear or a signal. Oh, oh, yeah, it's shaking like crazy. You see that right there? It says he can't he drive can't, it. No, you can't handle that. Nope, it just broke just something broke. big time. Yeah. That's I the think he just blew up. Yeah, you can hear the drive shaft dragging, it sounds like. Wow, listen to that thing. Yeah. Or it, it is to be just parts yeah, churning on, inside though. the transmission that we hear. That's too bad for Ricky. Going green, though, right now.
Casey Kane clears Kevin Harvick on the restart. Harvick battling Brad Keselowski for second. 22-33. Stenhouse has gone to the garage. Casey Kane's car is just flat, woke up. It is flat flying right now This after this restart. And before we saw this car get better and better, he was just not really that well. Running around the bottom of the racetrack, uncharacteristic for Casey. Now this thing's really starting to handle better. What's Elliot Sadler thinking right now with Ricky Stenhouse who's going to lead his championship out of it right now? Well, they just need to worry about what they're doing. They're back in 12th spot. They had a problem on pit road earlier. For the lead, Kevin Harvick with a look on Casey Kane. The NASCAR Nationwide Series, History 300 at Charlotte. Not quite to its one-third, actually just hitting its one-third mark today on a steamy 90-degree afternoon at the very fast Charlotte Motor Speedway. Joey Logano started on pole at the opening 20 laps. Then Kevin Harvick went to the point, built up a five-second lead, erased by a caution flag. He lost the lead to Casey Kane on a restart a few minutes ago. Now has just gotten it back. Lead lap, 28 cars, story of the day so far, championship leader Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who just had a part on his car, sounding like transmission, driveline, something, fail, and has just gone to the garage while his rival for the championship, Elliott Sadler, is in the 12th position and on the lead lap. See the points as they run, Stenhouse will likely lose more spots. He's in 33rd may or may not lose another spot depending on uh, how if they're able to get that car back out see joey coulter up there in a the 21 car he's been doing a good job and this particular car is running 11th place right now alongside his teammate elliot sadler in that two car both of those cars come out of richard childress racing shops for second place brad keselowski and l and uh, casey kane excuse me with joey logano closely in pursuit respectively 22 38 and 20. There is Stenhouse out of his car in the garage. And I want you to want you to watch the back of this six car in this replay. Yeah, it's a piece that looks like a piece of the drive shaft, possibly. It sure is that part of the drive shaft. And it looks like the back side of the drive shaft where it hooks the rear end, isn't it? It could be. It could be one end or the other. Yeah, I don't see that. Which one it is. I don't see the yoke that goes into the transmission. So it's an important part that's not supposed to be on the track. I know that. <laughs> that's now, right. He's already buckling back into this car. So if it's the drive shaft, they're obviously feeling like it didn't do much collateral damage, that they're going to be able to load him back up and get him out there fairly quickly. So then you have transmission. Back up right there in case they need it. So we'll follow the repairs on the six car. While, while we watch the action on the track here, third place, 38 Kane. Challenged by 20 Logano. And Austin Dillon beginning to roll back toward the front. Three car there. Started on the outside of the front row, fell outside the top ten, and now he's easing his way back forward. Well, some, sometimes you got to go out there and just find out where this racetrack's at. You can practice all you want on Thursday. Practice, start the race, and, and the car always feels different. But you got to get out there and run and run and go, okay, I get you now. I know what you need. <laughs> Give me a couple rounds of wedge. Let's change the merit pressure. Okay, now I'm happy. Then let's get racing. More on the Stenhouse situation, Mike. Well, Alan, it may only be May, but you can certainly get the feel of a championship race down here in the sixth camp. All hands on deck trying to repair this machine. It is a broken drive shaft. You guys hit the nail right on the head. All the team members trying to find a way to, to make the replacement there, trying to get the sixth car back out on the racetrack. Meanwhile, Ricky sits inside the car, helmet off, trying to work from the inside. It would appear on the, uh, the gear shifter area, trying to make sure everything is in working order when they do get back on the racetrack. Some things you, you worry about, though, is that you saw how violently that thing vibrated just before it broke. You worry about that breaking other pieces. Yeah, you see the Jack Roush on the left-hand side of your screen right there. The cat in the hat, we call him. This guy always talks about parts, whether it's engine parts or rear ends, transmissions. I can guarantee you he is like, what in the world broke? Because he's into parts. Yeah, and those drive shafts don't typically just break. See Etzel Ford, yep. the Ford Motor Company off to the left. This is a serious issue that they're both concerned about. 
again, because they just don't break parts like this. This is very unusual. Yeah, this is about their only horse in the race. They do have uh, Michael Annette out there in the 43, but Stenhouse is their flagship team. Pretty important when you see Mr. Ford down there next to, next to his Ford. Yeah. Tell what just interested. happened. I want you to watch just a small detail that I noticed on Kevin Harvick's car. Last lap by, coming through three and four. Watch the very left front corner of the car as he gets so low on the racetrack, he drags that splitter. See the smoke yep, off there? Yep, you can see it. Good job, Alan. That could be a problem later on if he wears that splitter out. And uh, it actually could come detached if you're not careful there. You know, I watch some of these cars after the races are over. They start off with these splitters. They're about a half of an inch thick. And a lot of times when these races are over, those things grind down to about a quarter of an inch. And they're generally putting brand new splitters on for the next event just because they grind down that much. Harvick right now with a nine-tenths of a second lead on Brad Keselowski, who runs second in Roger Penske's 22. Outside corner. Can't tell. Tight behind you in the 38. What's this can't tell stuff, man? I don't like that. Don't do that. I'll just let you know it's a blind spot for me. Now, you've never done that before. I don't want you to start doing that. <laughs> Drivers can just be picky when it's hot. Obviously, that a few minutes ago, because there are no cars around the 22 now. Joey Meyer, the spotter for Brad Keselowski. Well, it's about 90 degrees. He has a great rapport. About 90 degrees outside. If it was about 60, he wouldn't be saying yeah. that. He'd be a little calmer, a <laughs> little more respectful. It's like he said, you've never done that before. Why are you doing it now? <laughs> He's like, well, why are you doing that to me now? <laughs> 22, try to close in on the lead, Shannon. Alan, it's funny. I spent a few minutes with Brad Keselowski before driver introduction. I asked him how his day's going. Of course, he's doing double duty. He looked at me and he said, it's really hot outside. Of course, he started 10th year today. I asked him how the car was and he said, listen, I'm optimistic, but I'm also pessimistic. He said, we have a lot of work to do and they obviously have worked on that car. He certainly didn't think he would be up here this soon and they are making a run for that lead. Uh, the, the speeds out there right now between Kevin Harvick and Brett Keselowski, and you're watching them go by. They're identical, basically. They're about a tenth of a second faster than anybody else, but he's not lacking speed, Keselowski, in this 22 car over Harvick, that's for sure. Yeah, he's keeping Harvick a little more honest on this run than the, the previous run when we went green for so long. Harvick pulled out about four seconds. Not, I don't think he's going to be able to pull that kind of lead on Keselowski right now. Now, Elliot Sadler, back at 11th spot, lost some ground on the pit stop a little while ago, Dave. He came in running 7th, Allen. He left 14th. That's because they had their own problems, tripped over an air hose, but the car stopping in front of them, Kyle Fowler, stopped very close to the edge of their pit stall, and, and Elliot had to back his car out in order to leave pit road. So he left 14th. Right now, the car for him hitting the left front pretty hard, getting to the center, and he needs rear grip. So he should be further up gaining on Stenhouse than he is, but those are the reasons why he's not. All right, so we'll keep an eye on the two and that situation if it presents itself again on the next round of pit stops. Somebody else to keep an eye on, Denny Hamlin. Not with us earlier. Hamlin had to change a carburetor on pit road back at lap number 15. He lost a lap to the lead. He got the free pass back on this last caution at lap 60, and he's working his way up through the lead lap cars. Restarted 27th after that free pass, and now he's up to the uh, 14th position. You know, watch his lap times there. Uh, they're not bad. They're just not as good as the leaders that we're seeing. I don't know if they don't still have a few little issues with this car they need to work on. Well, now he's got himself in the lead lap. He's up there in a pretty decent position, Andy. He's about two-tenths of a second slower than where he needs to be. So now, since the pressure's off trying to get back on the lead lap, now they can go to work in this car and tune on it. Closing in on halfway in the History 300 at Charlotte for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Big race in the sports hometown. Right now, Kevin Harvick is out in front pursuing a first win at the Charlotte Motor Speedway in the Nationwide Series for the California native. That's one main story. Who's going to win the race? The other main story, championship leader Ricky Stenhouse Jr. with mechanical troubles in the garage. Nationwide Series celebrating, as always, Memorial Day weekend in Charlotte, the sport's hometown, where today's NASCAR Nationwide Series 300-mile race has had its moments in the early going. Including in this history 300 at Charlotte, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the championship leader, going to the garage with a driveline failure. They changed the drive shaft. He has come back after spending 22 laps behind the wall, and Stenhouse showing in 33rd position. 
with some time to try and make up some of that ground. At the front of the pack, it is Kevin Harvick. Talked about the big names winning the big races, and this being a big race, you look at that leaderboard, Harvick, Keselowski, Kane, and Logano. Four of the biggest names in the business. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm looking at the lap times right now, and they're all getting awful close. They were really spread out early in the event. But now the stuff's starting to tighten out. These guys have been working on their cars, adjusting them. They're all getting a little bit better. As a matter of fact, the top ten cars that I'm looking at, in fact, I'm sorry, the top nine cars are within a tenth of a second of speed. So they're all kind of getting their game going again here. Let's go up to speed with Nationwide Insurance and start with the sixth-place runner, Brian Scott, Mike. Alan, coming into the race, 12th in the standings, the crew chief for Brian Scott, Kevin Kidd, told us, hey, look, the pressure's off. We're not really running for the championship right now. I can be aggressive with my pit calls and try to go for the wins. That's what they did on the last stop. Four-tire change, air pressure. The car all of a sudden went from tight center to pretty neutral. Brian Scott pretty happy with it right now, Dave. Mike, since the last pit stop, which we saw kind of went wrong for Kyle Busch, he's picked up three positions on the racetrack right now, controlling his race car a little bit difficult, loose into the corner, and then won't turn in the center. He said, I can't afford to loosen it up anymore to turn the center because of that loose end, Mike. Dave, when Bruce Kitt Cook came on board as the crew chief for Cole Witt about five weeks ago, he was given a mandate by team owner Dale Earnhardt Jr. He told them, get Cole Witt's confidence back. He's been pumping him up, telling him positive things throughout the race on the radio. It's been making the car better as well. It's gone from free at the beginning to uh, pretty good right now as he runs inside the top ten, Shannon. Well, James Busher currently running ninth. This is exactly where he finished his Darlington race, which is the last race that he was in. Of course, he took last weekend off. Remember, he started the season with a win at Daytona. Right now, he's just struggling with some tight conditions inside that 30 car. Mike? Shannon, Justin Allgaier has been complaining the car's been loose, loose, and more loose throughout the course of the day. They did try to adjust on it. They made an air pressure tire uh, change and also a track bar adjustment the last time down pit road, but so far still just a little bit more free than Allgaier would like. Dave? And the two of Elliott Sadler, Mike, who reported on those pit stop problems that he had, now chasing Stenhouse closer in the championship. Again, his car, it is hitting the splitter. That's something they battled in practice. And getting the rear tires to grip this racetrack and give him some power is the biggest problem for the two right now. Alan? All right, Dave, thanks. Those uh, the top 11 cars out of some 28 that are on the lead, make it 27 on the lead lap now at this point in the race as we approach halfway. Uh, one other note, Joe Nemechek back on the racetrack after time behind the wall earlier in the event. He's 44 laps down in 36th place. Harvick leads. Green flag pit stop soon. We're back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Just past halfway in today's NASCAR Nationwide Series race at Charlotte. Four cautions, two for engine failures, two for Travis Pastrana spin. I think he's done a good job keeping that baby off the wall. I know he doesn't want to do that, but this is, he spun out at Darlington three or four times here. Hasn't hit anything. And main story of the day, big picture-wise, championship leader Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Breaks a drive shaft. Mechanical issue. Puts him in the garage area for a few laps. He's back out there now trying to gain some more spots back. And as we cross halfway, Kevin Harvick is one of four drivers that have traded the lead five times in this race. ABC Sunday, June 3rd, TV's biggest reality show returns. Every week, see the entire journey of one person over one year for one incredible transformation. Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition premieres Sunday, June 3rd, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central on ABC. One thing we found out in the first half of today's race, Kevin Harvick's car on a long green flag run has got some legs. Twice now, he has gapped second place on a long green flag run. Yeah, this is the History 300, and he's trying to change his history at this track. Yeah, very nice. And we've yeah. generally seen that all year long out of Ricky Stenhouse, but we're not going to see him today now doing that because he's too far behind. But Harvick, just like you guys have said, they have hit on the setup, and it's really suiting his driving style big time right now. Joey Logano is behind, next behind Keselowski. There's Logano in the 20, started on pole today. Led the opening 21 laps. He's hanging in in third, trying to win a third consecutive Nationwide Series race that he has entered. Fourth place, Casey Kane. Dave? He was pressuring Joey Logano just a lap or two ago, Alan. He just reported, feel like I'm losing power. They asked him to check the voltage. He said it's fine. He switched boxes. 
passes, but he feels like he's losing something. Andy, what is your checklist when your driver reports losing power? Well, that first thing you said, check the voltage. That would be the first thing, but if it's fine, there's not a lot you can do as a driver. I, I mean, it's, it's probably a, a valve spring. It could be any kind of thing in the engine mechanical going wrong. It could be something as simple as a carburetor or maybe a plug wire or something if you were lucky, but I've hardly ever been that lucky. If it's something losing power, it's usually something uh, internal. And you know, I've said before many times, man, I'm losing power. You know what was wrong with it? The car just wasn't handling right. Yeah. <laughs> and if I had the baby too tight, it just made the motor like feel like... That's happened a lot where the car was just not right. But now... I remember the beginning of the year at Daytona, some drivers had issues with the fuel pressure backing off on those fuel injection systems that caused them to slow down. These cars are not fuel injected, though. This is a regular carburetor, so I wouldn't expect to see that problem. That was good feedback, though. In case you said it feels like it's starving for fuel, that gives you an idea of some things that it might be. Hot weather, low fuel load. These cars are due for green flag pit stops shortly. Any... Nah, I mean, you, you kind of think about maybe vapor lock and that that's sort of right. thing, but, you, yeah. but that's not usually an issue with these cars. All right, expecting some of the leaders to be on pit road somewhere as early as lap 114. The leader this time being Kevin Harvick. Remember last green flag pit stop, he was headed for the pit lane when there was a caution on the track just ahead of him, and he managed to stay out on the racetrack, not get inside that commitment cone and make his pit stop under the yellow flag. That was back at lap 53. And we saw Danica Patrick, Sam Hornish make green flag stops during that cycle. And Harvick was going to be one of the first leaders on pit road, and the caution did come out. I remember when Kevin was operating his own race team, he is really frustrated with pit crews all the time. He had big leads like he's got right now. Hit pit road, have all kind of problems. I'm sure he doesn't want you talking about that right now. Before he but but that's what I think stop. about. I think about that all the time. Now, I'll tell you the other thing I think about, Denny Hamlin. Here, Denny Hamlin's back to 12th right now. In my opinion, he's got the best pit crew on pit road. They could probably pick him up some positions the next time he hits pit road. And Rusty, I've been watching the lap times. He's had either the first or second fastest lap time on the board for about the last 10 laps. So his car is definitely back running good again. Beginning to see some of the cars not on the lead lap. Big pit stops here while we watch this race for second place. Brad Keselowski, 22. Joey Logano, 20. Joey Gase, Casey Roderick, Jason Bowles are some of the lap cars that are coming and going on the pit lane at the moment. Travis Pastrana being overtaken by the leaders here. We showed you what an eventful day it's been for him. Right now he's three laps down in 29th place and still got another race to run today here in Charlotte. Global Rally Cross going to have an event later on today here at the Speedway. I believe I'm going to have to watch that race. I've heard a lot about those cars. Second place will change hands there as Austin Dillon, the first of the leaders to make a move to the pit lane from fifth place, Dave. With a car that he's very happy with. Early in the run, he said, it's good. It can't be any freer. Later in the run, he said, do not free it up. So I think he's hanging on to a car that is going very fast. Minor adjustments, if at all, for tire chains. Full of Sunoco fuel. Shannon? Yeah, guys, you see the 22 coming down pit road. The 33 making his way down pit road as well. Sam Hornish Jr. also in his pit box. He says the car needs to do a little bit better on the short run. Rear air pressure adjustment and a track bar for the 12 car. The 33 of Kevin Harvick, guys, he says that the car has lost rear grip going into turn one. They haven't made any changes to that car so far in the race. They will make an air pressure adjustment right now on this pit stop. Four tires. And then Brad Keselowski also on pit road following Kevin Harvick down. He said the car is starting to pivot too much in turns one and two. Still good in three and four. Four tires to no good fuel, fuel for Brad Keselowski. Dave. Michael Annette on pit road during this run running 18th. They will change four tires. Get him fixed up as well. He started on the pole. He says the changes that they made on the last pit stop, they're starting to work. He says, I just need more. So it's going to be air pressure and four tires for Joey Logano in that cool paint scheme. Danica Patrick also coming down pit road. Her car has been, the balance has been off pretty much the entire race. She just told her crew chief, Tony Uri Jr., if you can free me up anymore, that'd be great. I'm a little too tight right now. Four tires and air pressure for the seven of Danica Patrick. 
Justin Allgaier complaining that he's a little bit tight in the shade and loose in the sun. Variable track conditions. They're going to take four tires. They're also going to make a chassis adjustment and a full load of Sunoco race fuel on the 31 car. Well, and they saw a little bit coming off pit road. They do refire. Mike Wallace has not yet pitted. He is the race leader in the 01 car. Then it'll be Taylor Malsum in the 19. And it should come back around to Kevin Harvick after that fairly quickly. So younger brother Mike, a four-time winner in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Stretching this strategy to try and see if they can catch a caution and catch a lot of people a lap down. Yeah, he's, do, he's doing a great job out there. They keep that thing out of trouble and he's staying working on that car. That's all you can do if you got a car that's just not capable of running up front. You try to find a strategy to maybe steal some positions, and if they can get a caution there while they're still out, like they're pissed off under caution, they can steal a few. So after Mike Wallace pits, the lead will go back to Kevin Harvick with Brad Keselowski second and Joey Logano third as Wallace pits now. So the pit crew's all kind of holding station on their stops on pit road for Joey Logano's team. It was Chris Taylor, the rear tire changer, carrying our over-the-wall camera today. specially designed course here at Charlotte Motor Speedway as CSPN kicks off the 2012 Global Rally Cross Championship coverage at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. Now I want you to picture this. On, to do that. on this section of the racetrack from the front stretch to the pit lane to this trioval area, the cars are going to be doing that shortly. They've got ramps and they've got some water hazards and they've got other, they figured out a way to bring that out, install it after the Saturday race, run the rally cross race, take it back out so it's all ready to go for the Sprint Cup Series race tomorrow. Okay, so Jimmy Johnson and all of them don't have to negotiate that front straight away. No, they don't have to jump the ramps. Okay. I'll tell you what, they do some exciting things here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. <laughs> they, nothing they do surprise me, whether it's with the military or people jumping out of stuff. Like I said earlier, as soon as that global rally cross race is over, they'll be shooting people out of cannons out here. So it's a lot of excitement going on at this track. And I can't wait to watch that race. That's, I've never seen anything like that before. Between this race, that race, the Indy 500, the Coca-Cola 600 tomorrow night, if you haven't had enough racing by tomorrow night, there's, that, no, that means, there's, that, well, there's, no, there's no help in you? <laughs> I guess that means you're a race fan. There you go. Looks <laughs> like Kevin Harvick's leads dwindled just a little bit since the pit stops. Just looking at some of the lap times. You see the faster lap times being run by some cars a little further back. You see that uh, we that last graphic on, on the lead. So that, that right there is the one that's most amazing to me. There are no wins at this track for Kevin Harvick. 37-time winner in the NASCAR Nationwide Series and has never won here at Charlotte. He has won the Coca-Cola 600, the Spring Cup race. Won it last year, last May. But has not won in the Nationwide Series at I, this track yet, which is really kind of shocking. I got a feeling he knows that. He's like, come on, guys, back off. I'm 77 laps from winning yeah. this thing, and you're telling me how bad I am up here. Well, we talked about <laughs> earlier, dominating this race doesn't mean you're going to win it. Yeah, because it, it does change. The track changes a lot as this race wears on. And now I'm seeing some other cars that are running fast lap times. I, I know that the, they take a caution to bunch them back up, but there are some cars out there that are a lot more competitive than they were earlier. Do a little uh, housekeeping here, Andy. Uh, penalties on that last round of green flag pit stops. 39 car, Josh Richards, speeding, exiting the pit lane. Four car, Danny Eflin, speeding, entering the pit lane. And the 08 car of Kyle Fowler, they had an uncontrolled tire on the pit stop. They all got penalties following those pit stops. Race here for third, Joey Logano, 20, Casey Kane, 38. Well, I guess that engine's holding up pretty good with Casey. We heard him say he was losing power earlier in the race, but... Looks like it's pretty good now, Rusty. It could have been something just like you said. Car not handling right, change the tone of the engine, doesn't it? Oh, come on, Andy. You know better than that. I mean, you know these drivers always complain about motors. <laughs> oh, I had one of the worst. Harry Gant said the motor's blowing up just about every race. Uh, I've never had too much horsepower. I was, over, I was over a little short track the other day, and those guys are detuning those motors and doing stuff. I said, what are you guys doing? You need more power. That'll fix everything. Uh -oh. Car in trouble. Turn three and four. That is Taylor Balsam in the 19. Caution flag is out. 
know if he hit anything or not there. He spun in practice on Thursday, didn't hit anything. Looks like he may have got away with another one. Transition off the racetrack down onto the flat of the apron is pretty severe. And those splitters really hit hard. I'm surprised he didn't tear that up much. His flat gets oh, loose. Wow. Uh, just about over great. Looks like he did make some contact with the wall. But really, that's minimal damage. Very minimal. And you can see that, what Rusty said, coming off the track, that yeah. transition. Yeah. Like it may have buckled that left front fender a little bit. All right, so you've just been on pit road under the green flag, but you've got 74 laps to go. We see any strategy here, or do you both on forward and save the strategy for later? Yeah, it's hard to do any strategy now. I would think as slick as the track is, I'm going to get four tires if I'm up front. Just rather have that going for me. Yep. I'm glad you said that because if I'm driving that car. That's what you'd be calling for, right? I'd say. What if I said two, Rusty? What would you say? Come on, man. Don't do that. we got 77 <laughs> to go. I'd talk you into four tires. Well, you did it. You didn't have to work hard. <laughs> Always like sticky tires. But, you know, if you're a guy that's back there in the mid-pack and you're trying to steal some positions, you may try something to get you up there. But as far as the leaders go, I would take four here and not just leave it up to my driver. Harvick, Keselowski, Logano, Kane, and Scott, your top five on the pit stops with 73 laps to go. Dave? The call for Casey Kane was four tires and immediately two tires. They're going to make a two right side tire stop, fill it with fuel, tighten the car up just a little bit. Shannon. Dave, the call for the 22 car is four tires and an air pressure adjustment. He said we were much faster on that run. And you see Kevin Harvick on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. He says the car is getting a little bit loose. They are going to make a wedge adjustment and also go for four tires and some no fuel. Alex? So the 38 not be the only one to play some strategy. Yeah, you see quite a few cars just taking two tires. Kyle Busch, one of them. See where Kevin Harvick's going to shake out on the restart and how this all works out in just a minute. There's no calm quite like the one that falls over Indianapolis Motor Speedway as race day approaches. And there is no more thundering storm than the Indianapolis 500. Ryan Briscoe grabbed the pole by a millisecond. Three-time winner Elio Castroneves is in row two. And the legendary Andretti name lies strong with three drivers up front. History will be made Sunday. It's the Indianapolis 500 telecast presented by GoDaddy.com. Coverage begins at 11 a.m. Eastern on ABC. Going to be a hot, steamy day in Indianapolis for the 500 tomorrow, like it is today here in Charlotte, as we look down on the Charlotte Motor Speedway from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. From pit lane to victory lane, every NASCAR driver counts on Goodyear tires. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Some strategy on this round of pit stops. Fuel only for Joey Logano. Right sides for a handful of others. He's going to take the prior leader, Kevin Harvick, and stick him back in the pack. Right sides only for Casey Kane, Brian Scott, Kyle Busch, and Elliot Sadler. Harvick, the leader, prior to the pit stops. He's there on the outside of the third row in sixth position. Brad Keselowski back there in a 22 car took four tires on. So we had a little bit of mixture, just like you said, Alan, but I'd say more two tire changes than four. And here, I'm, as a driver, I'm trying to talk Andy and give me four, so. How about the fuel only on the 20? Yeah, that's still some positions for him, for sure. I don't know what they're thinking there. I guess their the tire wear has been looking really good on that car. Here's a look at the restart order for you as we get ready to go back at it. Michael Annette was the free pass car on that caution. He's in 17th position. And now last on the lead lap, there were some wave arounds as well on that caution. 11 of them took the wave around. Four to get back on the lead lap. Give you that list in a sec. Well, another good restart for Joey Logano. He's been doing this all day long when he's up front.
Kevin Harvick in that green and white 33 try and march back to the front. He's racing with Kyle Busch for third spot. We've had pretty much time right now with all these pit stops for these guys to get their act together, get these cars handling right right now. See Kyle Busch up there in the 54 trying to get some good grip, get his car going. It's not been too good all day long, but Harvick has been on fire all day long. And Casey Kane for the lead, trying to get it from Joey Logano. Casey's trying to get the lead before Harvick takes it from him. Gets it that lap. Casey Kane leads it. Oh, careful with that. I'm going to pay a lot of attention to the 20 car with no tires on it to see how good these things run. He didn't take tires, but the pit stop before that wasn't that many laps, so that might have been their strategy, saying, hey, we're fine right now by not taking anything. Keselowski by Harvick. Brad has four fresh tires from that pit stop. He's going to go to second spot. We saw Logano really slip there a little while ago, got up about two lanes up the track at the back of that car, really moving around. Goes to the bottom this time for a little more security. Quick mention, back to the lead lap with wave arounds on this yellow. Mike Wallace, Reed Sorensen, Jason Bowles, Timmy Hill, and Eric Darnell. Comes Kozlowski now for the lead on Casey Kane. Like the four tires are going to win out. Got it. I mean, that was a great move by Keselowski. He restarted, uh, Alan, what was it, about six or seven positions? Brad was in eighth for the restart. Eighth, and now he's leading just a handful of laps, so I saw what I needed to see right there. Four tires was a good decision. Yeah, one thing we're seeing, though, is like I said, Harvick's car didn't seem to be as good that last run before the caution that it had been earlier. I'm not sure if, they're, if the track is changing or, or they're not make, keeping up with it. I think Brad Keselowski and that 22 team doing a great job. I'll tell you what, if I'm the guys watching this on television right now, the cup guys for tomorrow's race, and I'm looking at this 22 car, knowing he restarted eighth position, he picked up an eighth to the lead in like four laps. Incredible. Now, some other things to follow up on from that last caution flag. While we were in the break, Sam Hornish Jr., Brad Keselowski's teammate, was on the pit lane, and the hood was up on that 12 car. Shannon? They brought that number 12 car down because Sam Hornis Jr. said he had a vibration in the front end, so they wanted to check the splitter to make sure it wasn't rubbing. Then the guys came over to the tires, and they pointed this out to me. They said when Sam came off pit road, he must have run over a lug nut, and they believe that this is what was causing the vibration. Yeah, that's kind of a strange pattern right there. It looks like either something on the car rubbing that or possibly, like you say, a lug nut or debris on the track. So Hornish in ninth, racing for that spot there with Austin Dillon in the three, Cole Witt in the 88, and James Busher in the 30. Kevin Harvick looked like he was going to roll right to the front off that restart in the 33 from sixth position. Got up to second. Oh, trouble, turn one. Couple of cars into the wall. Josh Richards, 39, Jason Bowles, 81, a hard crash. On well, that 81 car, they spent a couple days ago really repairing the right side of that car. NASCAR let them take it out of the racetrack, back to the shop, and now they've really hurt the front of that car. This team worked really hard on that thing, getting it back to the track here after a big crash the other day. Now we've got another one. Sure, if he just got loose. If Josh got Richards got loose, looks like he did just before that. Nowhere for but Jason Bowles to go. Yeah, Jason was just a Jason Boyle's just a victim in this particular one. Just couldn't go anywhere. I just mentioned Bowles had just taken the wave around to yeah. get back on the lead lap, and now has a badly damaged car. Josh Richards in the 39 was some three laps down to the race leader. Yeah, just go ahead and get out of it, Jason. Just go ahead and get out of it. That would be a good idea. That's yep. right at the entry to the pit lane. You see the red flag with the yellow cross being waved there and the red and yellow lights flashing. NASCAR will close the pit lane and not allow anyone to make a pit stop until they get that uh, 81 car out of there and get any liquid or oil or whatever that might get put down cleaned up. Good to see Jason out of the car sitting on the pit wall. We talked earlier about Jason Boyles. A lot of talent. 
won the Toyota All-Star Challenge out in California. Big, big short track race. He's won some championships. He's the lead representative for Oakley Sunglasses here in the Southeast. Does a lot of work with the drivers, the uniforms, and a driver. I think he's got a probably an oil cooler busted there. You can see from that damage in the front. As long as that engine's running, it's pumping oil through it or trying to. And uh, catches fire on the headers. Thankfully, he has climbed from the car. And result, though, a bit of a mess to be cleaned up. And the pit road closed because where Bowles car sits. So we will take a break while we wait for the cleanup to happen and we wait for the pit road to be open and see if any of the front runners may make a stop. We'll come back to Charlotte after this message and a word from our ABC stations. the caution and the cleanup here in Charlotte and a reminder later on tonight from here it is the Global Rally Cross Championship at 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2 part of a big motorsports weekend including the Indianapolis 500 telecast presented by GoDaddy.com here on ABC tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern time it's going to be a great race next weekend the NASCAR Nationwide Series at the Monster Mile in Dover Saturday 1 Eastern on ESPN that's always a good one and then the Toyota NHRA Super Nationals from England Town qualifying next Saturday on ESPN at 4:30 Eastern, and the finals next Sunday on ESPN2 also at 4:30 Eastern. So the timing of this caution flag and the extended leaving of pit road closed for the cleanup presents somewhat of a dilemma for these drivers and crew chiefs. Do you pit now or do you not? The problem is if we if we come now, about half of them are going to stay out, and we're going to try to pass them on even tires. So. I would rather stay out right now and get another caution, put our last set on, and drive back up through there again. Copy. Our fate is in the gods. Yeah, that's the dilemma. They can make it from here on fuel. So if they don't pit, and some of these cars do, and it goes green, then they're, they're going to have to make that green flag stop. Jeremy Bullens, the uh, crew chief, hidden there behind Kevin Buskirk, the engineer, uh, having to have that conversation with Brad Keselowski. Now, it's interesting, in the interest of controlling costs, if you're new to NASCAR, Nationwide Series teams are limited to the number of sets of tires they can use for a race weekend. So they start today's race with the set of tires they had on the car and four on the pit lane. So Bullen's talking about having one set of tires left to change on the 22. Well, last pit stop, Joey Logano's team didn't change any tires. So compared to the 22, they have an extra set of tires. Advantage if you take the rubber, but disadvantage if you take the rubber. Yeah, it's a disadvantage track position-wise. Obviously going to be better on four-tire speed speed-wise, but this caution came just a little bit sooner than what Adam Stevens wanted to see. He would like to have seen this thing go just a little bit farther, and then that caution come out and be able to use that extra set of tires that he has, maybe to their advantage. We'll see how it works out here, because Joey was holding station pretty well by just taking fuel only on the last caution, but now they can make it all the way. It's going to be interesting to see how these crew chiefs play. Well, we've seen more caution flags today than we've seen normally at the uh, this year we a lot of people complained about not enough caution flags a lot of green flag runs well today we've had a lot of caution flags and i'm going to predict we're going to have another one. pit road's going to be open here numbers will back you up on that i'll get to okay. that a little bit here i know andy <laughs> loves that pit road's open here so we'll cue the jeopardy music and let's see what the decisions are these stops would be with 57 laps to go and there are 20 cars on the lead lap ah, boy okay. well thank you there kind of what I expected to see. I expected to see most cars pit. I think that's a safe move. Now what do they do while they're in there? Dave? Kyle Busch wants his car improved chassis-wise, but they're going to hang on to that set of tires till the end. Just fuel and some chassis adjustments. Shannon? And Dave, the guys that did come down pit road, Kevin Harvick is one of them. He said leave the tires. We're going to take fuel only, and he is down away. The 20 car, Joey Logano, of course, he did not take tires on that last pit stop, so you see those guys going to work. Add some four fresh tires to that 20 car, and he is down the way as well. Uh-huh. Well, there you go. And uh, that's probably not a bad move for Keselowski to go ahead and get those tires now. Uh, Logano. I'm sorry, Logano. Yeah, getting the tires. So, those that did not hit 
Like leader Brad Keselowski, how will they fare against those that did? 57 laps to go. ESPN's coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series on ABC. Brought to you by the Hatfields and McCoys. The feud begins only on history. Field coming to the one to go signal. Joey Logano's team just put on a fresh set of tires. He's our in-race reporter, and he's back in 15th place, Rusty. Joey Logano, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? Yeah, man, I got you. Okay, buddy, you're 15th place. You got four new tires today, baby. What's that car been feeling like all day long? Well, it was pretty good up front. Now we're going to see what it's like with uh, a lot of dirty air here. So, uh, race did a play out as we planned there with our strategy. So, we got some work to do, but we'll be fine. We'll get up back up there in a few laps. Joey, is the track pretty slick out there? Looks like we've seen a lot of cars spinning out and slipping all over this place. Well, the temperature in here says it's still really hot. So, I'm assuming it's still really hot out there. We're flying around quite a bit. Okay, man. Have a great race. Good. Joey Logano, third to 15th with the strategy as we get set for a restart, Mike. Catching up with the two guys involved in that last incident. First, Josh Richards, what happened? Uh, you know, just uh, one thing after another today. We've had, had a good car and uh, had our transmission stuck in fourth gear and had to come in and, and go some laps down. Just trying to ride around out there. Um, I've been loose in all day, and uh, towards the end of that last run, I kept getting snappy loose in and, and snappy loose in, and then uh, I don't know if we had a left rear tire going down or something, and finally it felt like the right rear might have got up into the speedy dry, then from that point being loose, uh, it just, you know, just snapped around there, and then, uh, you know, it sucked that Jason got hooked up there, but uh, frustrating day. Uh, it was great to be here, though. It was cool to get to race here for the first time uh, for NSW Kids, and uh, we'll be back. And catching up with Jason Bowles, too. He just came from the care center. He is fine, Alan, as we're ready to go back green. All right, Mike, thanks. Coming to the restart. Good to see that Jason uh, is okay. Denny Hamlin first off the pit lane outside of row number two in the 18 car, but no fresh tires. First three didn't pit. Kozlowski, Kane, and Allgaier. Joey Logano with the fresh tires back in 15. And 54 to go. We have a little shade on the track right now, so there should be some good grip. Tires are cooled down. Oh, oh no one in trouble. Brian he Scott it, he? and yeah. Cole no, no, they hit the wall. Brian Scott was wheeling it. Well, predictions were right, Alan, on these caution flags. Yeah. You can tell it. A hot track, a slick track. Starting to run out of time. Strategies running through these drivers' minds right now, and they're all in a hurry. Man, isn't this the story of Brian Scott's season? Yeah. Every day he's got a good car. He's up there contending. Something happens. And Colwitz's car. I tell you, Cole's been kind of the leader of this camp all year long, the Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's been running strong. Good runs almost every single race and had another good run going today until this happened. Let's see if Austin Dillon doesn't have a problem here in the three that starts this whole wow, thing. Wow, he's loose. No. Nope. Everybody was just loose right there. We kind of got dumped from behind, too, it looked like. Alan, I see what you're saying about Austin Dillon. Looks like he saw the guys up front getting loose. He checked up. Yeah, but Brian Scott's in front of, of Dillon. Yeah. Looks like Brian... See, that's Brian up there. Dillon got out of the throttle, seeing what was going Everybody on. Everybody just sliding through that corner. And then same thing with the yeah, didn't get hit either. Something on the track, maybe? Possibly. Definitely took everybody by surprise. Stay low. And Brian Scott with mangled race cars. You saw Cole drive his away. There's Brian climbing from his. And the yellow flag is out for a seventh time in this race. Brian Scott was running in eighth position at the time. Cole Witt was in 11th. Cole Witt drove his car back to the garage area. Yep. Mentioned that uh, Taylor Malsom got the free pass at the last caution. Jeremy Clements gets it at this yellow. So, 
52 laps to go. Didn't really run any laps since that last restart. I don't expect anybody to pit here. If you're going to do that, you would have done it on the last stop, the last opportunity to make a stop. And get into the, the, the historicals if you want. Uh, 12 laps or less is the green flag trend. 14 of the last 16 nationwide races at Charlotte. It's come down to a run of 12 laps or fewer to the checkers. So history says we're going to see another checkered flag. Now that's 12 of, of uh, what did I just say? 12 of 14? Yeah, and it is the history 300, yeah, so we're so going to go with it. There, there are still two exceptions to the rule. You can always get that stray long run, but the way this one's been, I'd plan on the late yellow. <laughs> Caution number seven. Out here in Charlotte, a couple of cars crashing off of turn number two in the history 300 at Charlotte. ESPN's exclusive season-long coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series today with the History 300 at Charlotte, a race that has approached its three-quarter mark with a rash of caution flags of late that have slowed the pace and torn up some race cars. History 300 from Charlotte. Go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. If you went there right now, we'd show you that there are several race cars behind the wall in this one. After accidents, a couple in quick succession have damaged the cars of Josh Richards and Jason Bowles and Brian Scott and Cole Witt. Brad Keselowski is the leader. They did not pit on that last caution when several others did, Shannon. Well, let's see how that uh, not pitting and not coming down to take fuel is going to pay off for them. Jeremy Bullins, I asked you, I screamed up here, and you said about three to five laps short. That was before that last restart, before this caution. Right. Where are you guys right now? Uh, it's getting better all the time. <laughs> um, he's doing a really good job of saving fuel. We feel like we're getting pretty close here. Uh, I'd feel better about one more caution, but uh, I think we, we should be able to manage from here. But, uh, you know, it's all about track position and trying to stay up front. And sometimes you got to take that gamble, and hopefully it'll pay off for us. See what happens. And of course, the 22 looking to make this a big weekend for Penske Racing. Dave? With Mike Shiplett now, who was the crew chief the last time Casey Kane won a nationwide race here in Charlotte. That was with the Ray Everham Group uh, back in 2007. So how do you make this one work this time? You're out on old tires and short on fuel right now. Well, the great clips, uh, Chevy and Paolo will be uh, good there at the end. Uh, we're hoping to get a caution with about 20, 25 laps to go. We'll come in. we got four tires here to put on it, and uh, we'll be good to the end. So there's no guarantee on that. Uh, what's the backup plan? Uh, the backup plan is we get a couple more laps of yellow. We'll uh, watch the checker flag drop. See, there you go. He's got both plans working, Alan. Yeah, looks like he's working your uh, history plan, Alan. Planning on that caution flag coming out. Well, they all have their, their histories. Oh, yeah. You know, they all have the numbers that they calculate over the last five years worth of races here or whatever. And they, they all even have it plotted out as to when the caution should come out in that range. Well, we saw Brad Keselowski put four tires on, restart eighth position, and make it to the front fairly quickly. So these guys could probably come. If, they, if we had a caution flag, like you said, Alan, around 12, 14 laps to go, you could probably put four on and still get to the front. There'll be a big rush to pit road if we get a caution with 12 or 14 to go. I would sure, certainly think. Just joining us, Joey Logano started on pole for this one, led the opening 20 laps, the middle stages of the race, pretty well dominated by Kevin Harvick on long green flag runs. Harvick stretched out as much as a five-second advantage on two different occasions. Then uh, an exchange of strategy a short while ago saw Harvick's team get four tires and go from first to sixth, while several others got either just rights or fuel only. That put Joey Logano back to the point. He was overtaken by Brad Keselowski, who got four tires at the same time Harvick did and restarted eighth, roared up to the top spot. And then on this, uh, not this caution, but the caution before when there were some pit stops, Keselowski, Kane, and Allgaier stayed out while most of the others came in and took a splash of fuel. And Logano took four tires. And now we sit here with a total of 20 cars on the lead lap and 48 laps to go. Mike? And Brian Scott has just emerged from the care center. We heard you on the radio just after that incident saying you might have had some oil on the racetrack. What, what happened? Yeah, uh, the restarts were the only weakness for our Dollar General Toyota today. We were really good in the long run. Uh, you know, it was getting time to go. We just got our last pit stop done. We were good on fuel. I was trying to get everything I could on the restart, and uh, they just didn't do a very good job cleaning the track up because as soon as I, I saw it right before I hit it, and as soon as I hit it, the car just uh, jumped sideways on me and washed out. And, 
unfortunately we wrecked a fast race car we had a race car capable of uh, running in the top five and maybe with one more adjustment and a set of tires we had sitting in the pit we could have contended for the win now we're uh, now we're done well, the good news Alan is Brian Scott is okay very difficult day for Brian Scott continuing a trend that has been uh, a difficult season for him So field getting the one to go signal will go racing next time by Brad Keselowski is the race leader. How's the track look, champ? What do you think? Well, it's got so many spots on it with oil dry and fluid that it's hard to tell. But it's definitely got a big spot in the middle of one or two that's very dark. Observation from the cockpit of that Dodge. Yeah, well, with that kind of uh, observation, I believe I'd pick the bottom lane since I'm the leader and I have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> Put those other guys up top. Yeah. Well, which he has done. So it's Kislowski and Casey Kane. Paul Geyer and Kyle Busch. Denny Hamlin coming back from having changed the carburetor and gone a lap down. 15 laps into the race, now running fifth. Then Kevin Harvick talked about him having as much as a five-second lead on a couple of occasions in this race. Those are the first three rows for the restart. Danica hanging in there, ninth spot. Joey Logano back there, leader before. Now back in 12th position, trying to work his way back to the front. And this restart's going to come with 46 laps to go. It's still, uh, still basically a quarter of this race to run. Yeah, yeah. it's still go time, though. It's, it's, it's down to the, to the end where we need to start pushing to the front. Let's see what happens this time. Casey came for second. Now, oh, look out. That was Denny Hamlin with a big wiggle. Top lane. He found that slick spot over there in turns one and two. Well, he's got Harvick right behind him. Pushed him on the back straightaway almost. And he got big time loose up there and held off that 18 car. You know what, guys? Take a look at Danica Patrick. She's hanging in there doing a good job still. Last, by, last time by, she was ninth position. All day long, not a dent in that car. She's driving the wheels off that thing. Here comes Kyle Busch. Six-time Charlotte winner in the Nationwide Series. Can't quite clear Casey Kane for second. Hey, it's just amazing how much down force the car gets when it's out front with clean air. The 22 car Keselowski is the one I'm talking about. Quite a bit faster than the rest of the cars right now. He's one of the cars that's really tight on fuel. Crew chief says he thinks he can make it if they get another caution flag. Oh, ooh, Kane way high there. Oh, he wow. was. He was using it up right there. Keselowski did run his fastest lap of the race last lap. Kyle's going to get clear this time of Casey Kane. Yeah, let's take a look at Justin Algar there, guys, in the 31 car. He's, he's about as strong as he's been all day long. He's had a good top 10 car. But with every stop, it gets better. It's a good time to be be your best is right here at the end. Remember, didn't pit on the caution at 143 to move up from 14th to 3rd at that time. And these are team cars, the 38 car Casey Kane and the 31 Nalgar. Turner Motorsports coming out of the same shop. Aggressive move by Denny Hammer. We got that car fixed. They, they changed that carburetor, and uh, I believe they got it running perfect now. I gotta believe he gets close enough, and a caution does come out. These guys come take four tires. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Algar get loose. A big loose, big slide right there out of 31 of Algar. He gave that car an opportunity to stick, it just didn't take it. Yes. 
So Hamlin to fourth, Allgaier to fifth, and being challenged there by Kevin Harvick, 33, and Elliott Saffer in the two. I'll tell you what, Justin's in trouble there, Andy, just getting really loose in three and four. It's the second time he lost a lot of positions there. How busy are the hands on that 31? I can guarantee you one thing, Hamlin, he doesn't want to be that busy. Let's watch him getting into turn three. It's where he's had his problems here last time. Who trying to get to the bottom? Yeah, O'Donnell that, was there. That thing's wiggling like crazy. He'll do that with that 20, 20 car up under your back bumper. Oh, uh, you get a car <laughs> behind you, it takes so much downforce off your car. Get you really loose when you get a car packed behind you like that. Two guys on opposite missions here. Remember, Allgaier didn't take the tires, gained the track position. Logano took the tires, gave up the track position. And they are passing each other going in opposite directions. Yeah, at this point, Allgaier's holding up a line of cars. See Busher, even the lap car there of Stenhouse. He's still fast. They changed that drive shaft. He's back out there many laps down, but his car is plenty fast. Just another, sorry, go ahead. No, you got Dylan right behind him also. Haven't made that pit stop just a minute ago. Well, look out. Uh-oh. I'm telling you Those what. Those are teammates there. Busher <laughs> in the 30 and Allgaier in the 31. Allgaier's fun to watch right now. He's got that baby all over. Oh, still right making wow. contact. It's barely holding on. That's another team car, a 30 car. Not there. Stenhouse has got a great view of this. He's got a good seat. Might Just be too good. I believe I'd get out of there. James Busher, the winner of the opening race in Daytona, a 30 car. Teammates with a 31 car of Justin Allgaier. Just joining us, Stenhouse went to the garage earlier. Drive shaft came out of the six car. He's 21 laps down in 29th place. Instead of contending for the win. And Stenhouse had a winning car, Allen, when that drive shaft broke. And he's fighting for the points. He's got an 11-point lead at this stage over Elliott Sadler. At this point in the race. Yeah, one thing Stenhouse needs to remember is that he is 21 laps down, and these cars are racing on the lead lap. And if he's ever in this position where he's on the lead lap, he'd want consideration from lap cars. He, he's racing amongst these guys and uh, probably not making a lot of friends right now. Folks there, Danica backed off to keep from running into Austin Dillon in the three, and Mike Bliss had to check up pretty quickly as well in the 44. All those cars lead lap, as is Mike Lynette in the 43. And Joey Coulter in the 21. That's a Richard Childress racing car. Haven't talked much about it. Nationwide Series debut. A little hiccup qualifying, but he's run a pretty clean race so far. Looking good in that Childress car. Coulter, a 21-year-old out of the Miami area, running the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, was the Rookie of the Year on that tour last year. Mechanical Engineering Junior at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. How about this driver in 21, Shannon? Yeah, Andy just mentioned a little hiccup in qualifying. He's fun coming off of turn four. Went through the front stretch grass. But guys, he did not have any contact with anything. They only needed to change the tires. And of course, this car has been doing very well all race. He's just been battling a little bit of snug conditions as most drivers have been today. Coulter told me here on Thursday that he is uh, did a test on Tuesday of this week to run an ARCA race up in Michigan. New pavement on that big, fast two-mile track. Said they were running 217 miles an hour off into the corner. Oh, my gosh. That's going to be fun. Oh, oh, Michael Annette. Ran out of room off turn four. That's a pretty hard leg for Annette. They have really struggled with that car of late. They've, that's an identical car to Ricky Stenhouse. They get those from, Rich, from uh, Jack Rouse's program. They can't get the car qualified for whatever reason. He spends the rest of the race trying to get it up to the front. Started 22nd today. Been struggling all day long with that 43 car. 12th place here. Danica Patrick, 7. Mike Bliss, 44. Andy, I tell you what. Danica just keeps learning more and more every time out. Yeah, she's getting better every week. You know, I talked to a lot of her IndyCar drivers that she drove with up there. She's, I'll tell you one thing, Rusty. When she comes stock her race, the one thing you'll notice is she won't wreck many cars. In IndyCar, she crashed very little. If she gets going a little too quick and the car's not handling correctly, she just slows down. 
And we saw that at Darlington in the cup race where she got lapped many times in a race, but she didn't put a dent on the car. Then in the nationwide car, we saw her finish 12th and run a great race. She does some tear up cars. Joey Logano still trying to make his way back toward the front. Running in eighth place right now, looking to find a way around Sam Hornish in the 12. Well, Joey has the freshest tires on the track. He took four tires under that caution at lap 143. Last time by, the fastest car in the racetrack, Kyle Busch. And Logano through to seventh place. Problem is he's 6.3 seconds behind Brad Keselowski. And this whole thing set up about three cautions ago when Brad Keselowski put four tires on, drove up through the field, got the lead. Now he's got the track position. He's been able to keep it because of that spit pit stop two to three times ago. Well, we're inside the final 50 miles of the History 300 at Charlotte for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. The 2010 Nationwide Champ, Brad Keselowski. Looking for another win at this racetrack. He's had a lot of fun here lately. At sunup tomorrow, the fans will begin streaming in to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway at the corner of 16th and Georgetown for the 96th running of the Indianapolis 500, the greatest spectacle in racing. Ryan Briscoe for Roger Penske on the pole. Former winner Elio Castroneves, and of course the famed Andretti name in the hunt as well. New cars, new rules, so many possible outcomes. The Indianapolis 500 telecast presented by GoDaddy.com, ABC, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, tomorrow. And here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, the NASCAR Nationwide Series. In its 61st race at this fast mile and a half track, 24 laps to go. Brad Kozlowski is out in front of second place Kyle Busch by 1.7 seconds. Tell, yeah. you what, tell you what, Alan, going back to the Indy 500, that's going to be a heck of a race. You, one thing this year, they got Chevrolet as an engine provider in their thing. It's always been Honda. To be interested to see what happens this time. While we were away in the break, Denny Hamlin got by Casey Kane to go to third. So Hamlin coming back from that carburetor change at lap 15, coming back onto the lead lap, and you see easing his way toward the front if a caution comes out. He's got a fast car, you know? It's been a long, hard drive for these guys, Mike. It definitely has, Alan. They've overcome quite a few hurdles, especially earlier in the race with that carburetor situation that you mentioned there. Still, though, as uh, you might expect from a guy who's been as successful as Denny Hamlin, he's not happy until everything is absolutely perfect. He's still been nitpicking, saying the car's a little bit tight. He's never been truly happy with the race car throughout the course of the day, but it's come a long way since the beginning of the race when he described it as, quote, pitiful. Let's see how Hamlin compares to Brad Keselowski and Kyle Busch and the rest. we we'll check speeds at the line as the leaders come by this time. They'll come by with an even 20 laps to go in the race. That'll be a pretty good snapshot. You see the 22 car is really in clean air. His lap time was a 31, 39, you can see 172 miles an hour. How about Hamlin though? He's the quickest of those top, top eight. Okay. Problem for Hamlin is that, 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 that difference in speed between he and Keselowski is only about a tenth of a second. Yeah, it's not enough to make up the ground he's behind. Right. There you go. Eric Darnell in the 40 car is coming down the pit road slowly and headed for the garage because something very important on his car is no longer attached to it. Watch for an end of the sporty. Oops. It's like a side skirt. Yeah, it could have been someone with a side skirt. You're right. He'd, he'd see on the right side he'd have some damage. Or a piece of that front splitter. That lower lip of the front splitter. Well, hell, it could be that. I mean, it could be, it could have wore off that much that it, it, it looked like a splitter. I mean, it looked like a side skirt. It is a splitter. It's something flat. It's, something, <laughs> it's supposed to be on the car. <laughs> yeah. But it's not. 88 Cole Witt has just returned from the garage area. 32 laps down after the crash he was involved in 
back at lap 146. So Denny Hamlin trying to stalk Kyle Busch for second place. Remember the two great finishes we saw between the 18 and 54 cars in consecutive uh, consecutive races? Richmond and Talladega. Different drivers in each car both weeks, but fabulous finishes. Thrilling finishes. That one at Richmond, I don't know if I've ever seen a, a finish at Richmond quite as good. You know, guys, we talked earlier in the show about Kyle Busch. I did at least about the engines maybe being off a little bit. And how much have these teams, this team really improved this 54 car, Kyle Busch's new team. And sitting there in second place right now, I've got to say they've picked their game up quite a bit from the beginning of the year. Yeah, their the engine's much better. Their engines may not be off as far as you think as is what you might hear. Right. They did a test with the trucks uh, after the race here and found that the, the Toyota truck engines, uh, which are virtually the same as these, are really close in horsepower. Mike Beam looking on, Dave. And he's got a mantra for his team this year. He says, you know, I can buy X amount of speed. That's available to purchase. To get that extra bit of speed that we need to win, we've got to work hard on that. And that's what these guys have been trying each week to improve this race car. It's very good today. He has fuel to the end of the race. They made a chassis adjustment the last time to try to improve it a bit. And he got two spots on the restart. But chasing down that 22 has been a big task. Still a second and eight tenths behind Brad Kozlowski. 15 laps to go. Looking down on Charlotte Motor Speedway from our aerial coverage today provided by Goodyear. From pit lane to victory lane, every NASCAR driver counts on Goodyear tires. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Well, I don't know if they'll catch him or not, but Kyle Busch just outran Brad Kozlowski about two tenths of a second that last time by. And just looking out the window, I see Kyle definitely get close. Okay, uh, Alan, we're inside of 14 laps to go now. It's time. So what, is, what do your numbers <laughs> say? Yeah, it's time. Recent history says this is about the range for uh, that last caution flag. We'll see if we get it. Could be the exception. It could be. Never know. Well, I'm predicting we're going to have a caution flag, although I would have never thought we'd run as long as we did. And many of these races this year with no cautions either. If Keselowski has enough fuel, which that's still in question because he did not pit under the last caution, but if he has enough fuel, he's not looking for a caution, I don't think, Shannon. Well, guys, I just uh, looked up at Jeremy Bullen's crew chief for Brad Keselowski, and I gave him a thumbs up trying to ask him if they're good on fuel, and he kind of shrugged his shoulders and looked at me, and then I asked him, are you going to go for it? And he shrugged his shoulders again and kind of looked at me. I think that's a yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he's not sure. That's the yeah. trick. Did they get enough caution flag laps? And he doesn't know since this restart, Shannon, how much fuel his driver has been saving him since he got out to the big lead. You know, yeah, he probably has saved quite a bit of fuel by having that lead, Alan. You know, other forms of motorsports actually have gas gauges in their cars, and NASCAR cars don't. That's way third place changing hands there, Rusty. Sorry. That's okay. Kevin Harvick going by Casey Kane. I saw that's fourth place changing hands. If the race fans come to me all the time say, why don't NASCAR cars have gas gauges? You know what I tell them? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just one of those rules. Just, just another piece to put on a race car yeah. that costs money. NASCAR tries to keep it exciting. Second place, Denny Hamlin trying to get around Kyle Busch. Both of them trying to ease in on Brad Keselowski. Seems like Brad's been able to maintain that one point seven second lead or thereabouts so he probably is saving fuel looking in the mirror that's what i'm thinking too he got got himself a gap and now he's just maintaining that gap you know, he's an awful smart driver keselowski is and with the gap that big he can afford to do that save that fuel if he's at all concerned it sounds like they are so hamlin to second yeah, Denny Hamlin's not worried about fuel. He's going to stand on it to the end. One Three. and six tenths seconds behind Brad Keselowski. Yeah, now that we have a new second place car in Denny Hamlin, we'll see if he can close that gap on Keselowski or whether Ke Keselowski's got anything left. And yeah, he doesn't have to race Kyle Busch now, so he can just really let that baby hang out like he is now. And last time by, Andy, he was a tenth and a half faster than Brad Keselowski, so he's definitely catching him. Got a long way to go and a short time to get there. We'll see. Eight laps to go. 
He's knocked it a little bit. Well, actually, that lap they pretty well maintained. Brad Kozlowski, 2010, a winner at this racetrack. Trying to get another one. Does he have the fuel to get there? Can only do so much, you know. We clean our hand, but it's either going to be really good or really bad. Hit four. Keep it posted, Joe. You're doing good. They're just talking about fuel right there. They've made their, they've, like I said, their hand's already been played out. It's going to be what it's going to be. If it uh, holds out for fuel and no caution flies, they're going to be a winner. Well, I'll tell you what, really gut reaching though for the crew chief and the driver. It's really tough. And I'm looking out the window right now, Andy, and I, it doesn't have a caution flag look to it. The cars are spread out a little bit. I'd be surprised if we get a caution flag at all, like you thought there might be. He's been maintaining that little gap he's got on Denny Hamlin now, about a second and a half. Been kind of a feast or famine year for Brad Kozlowski. He's got five top three finishes, but he's also got four finishes of 16th or worse. Another year in this Nationwide Series program of getting together with a new crew chief and trying to get together on the same page and get it all sorted out. This now for them, it's taken a while. It's been like the eighth race of the year before they've gotten their first win. Uh, as a general statement, the last couple of years around, here's Brad getting ready if the fuel holds out to get into victory lane. This is the 12th race of the year. He hasn't run them all. Yeah, the one common denominator has been Brad Keselowski in this car. Had great crew chiefs. Paul Wolf was crew chief on this car a couple years ago, and they developed some talent there. Down to 1.1 seconds for Hamlin. He still can't make up that gap if the caution doesn't fly. Yeah, I'm, I'm or, or the 22 runs out of fuel. I'm trying mm -hmm. to calculate this in my head right now. I mean, the, the distance he is behind, which is 1.19 seconds, it's the numbers aren't adding up that he can catch him before this race is over. The only numbers that the 22 team's worried about right now are those fuel calculation numbers. Yeah, that's exactly right. Brad's got a good handle on that gap. He, he's got a car fast enough to stay in front of Denny Hamlin. Everything in the top 10 pretty well spread out, except for Casey Kane and Elliott Sadler racing for fifth and sixth. We keep our eyes on the lead as we come now down to three laps to go. Is there enough fuel on board this 22 to get to the checkered flag? No sign of a late caution yet. It could still happen and set up a green-white checker finish. How's it going to play out? I'm going to see if I can hold my breath for three laps. That's a long time here. Yeah, right now the story is, can this 22 make it on fuel? That's the big story right now. And he's been out of the throttle, trying to save some gas. The crew chief's been talking to him. He's pedaling that baby, I call it. Or as John Force would call it, in drag racing. See, Matt Lucas, he's standing up now. That's crew chief for Denny Hamlin. He wants to get a good, good view of this if it happens. There it is. First to second. They're coming to the white flag. Once Keselowski gets to the white flag, there'll be no green-white checker. If a caution comes out, the race is over. If it spars on fuel, Denny Hamlin is there. Final lap at Charlotte. It's less than a second gap. That 22 even stumbles. I think Denny Hamlin can get him. If it doesn't, no chance. Under power to turn three. The fuel's going to hold out, and the checkered flag and trophy will belong to Brad Keselowski and Penske Racing. Keselowski wins at Charlotte again. Good work. And I walked all over you, but you won that race for us. Thank you. Oh, man, you all deserve it. Good work. That's a gutsy call. And that might just be some good luck for Team Penske up in Indianapolis right now, watching this big win out of Brad. The big Indy 500 tomorrow. Brings a lot of good, uh, good luck to that team, hopefully. Well, they made the call to stay on the racetrack at lap 143 when a lot of their counterparts pitted, got in the track position, Shannon, and the fuel held out. 
All right, Jeremy, I was asking you a couple questions from down there on the ground, and you didn't give me any really good answers. You kind of shrugged, didn't you? Didn't have any good answers, so. <laughs> so give me an answer to this. What was that last lap like for you? Well, the last 73 were the longest 73 laps of my racing career, but uh, just so happy for this group. We've been close all year. We've been bringing good cars to the racetrack and had little thing after little thing go wrong. And uh, just, just so happy to finally put this group where it belongs in victory lane. Congratulations. Alan? And the driver? whose charitable foundation does things for... Congratulations, Jeremy. Soldiers who've returned home, military veterans who've been injured in action, takes his, what is now customary, star-spangled celebration of victory. First win of 2012, second win here at Charlotte. And for Roger Penske, his 24th career victory in the NASCAR Nationwide Series and his first of 2012 in this series. Kyle Busch came home third, Dave. It was a great drive for him. Something a little bit lacking at the end of this, Kyle, for you. What was it? Uh, just... Lost a little bit of turn. We've kind of been doing that on the long runs, but guys did a great job. I mean, this Monster Energy Camry was pretty good. You know, I hate it. We fell to third. Uh, I'd rather we finish second, obviously, but, um, you know, this is a, a very good improvement. Uh, Mike Beam and all the guys, uh, Rick, everybody's done a good job and just trying to keep working at it, you know, keep trying to get better. We're just the little guys that can, and hopefully, um, you know, we can keep it going like that. They worked hard, finished third today. Mike? Dave, Denny Hamlin had to replace a carburetor early in the race. You weren't happy with the race car most of the afternoon yet. Here you sit, runner-up today. How would you describe the afternoon? Well, it was a great battle back for our sport club. So it's uh, just uh, struggling, you know, to, to get the, 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 in, the motor run at the end of the straightaway. And we thought it was a carburetor problem, but it wasn't. But, uh, you know, so it just fought the handling, fought everything today. It just didn't have uh, that good of a car. But uh, we were able to make something of it. Uh, to finish second uh, is a good, good day for these guys and uh, especially with the car I you know of a lot of things that we could do to make this thing better you were right in the tire track so Brad Keselowski in the closing laps what were your thoughts as you tried to close that gap well, I used my stuff up so much trying to you know get back through the field and get around the, the 38 and, and Kyle that uh, I just wore the right front right off of it so I just uh, didn't do a good job with tire management uh, or else maybe we could have caught him, but you know, you never know how hard he was running anyway because of the fuel issue. Nice run. Thank you. Eddie Hamlin brings it home second, Dave. Elliot Sadler finished fifth today. Elliot, uh, car hitting the track a little bit, other issues today. How tough was that for you? Yeah, we just missed our travels a little bit. We were hitting the racetrack. Uh, we've been doing a little bit on these mile and a half. We're trying to get all the damn force we can, but Luke made some great adjustments uh, during the race to, to, to get it off the, the racetrack a little bit where I can run up front with these guys. But proud of everybody on this one main financial car to keep digging and keep fighting and uh, get a top five finish on two tires. We tried some pitch strategy, and, and it didn't bite us. So uh, I'm glad it went green there the, the rest of the way. And, we gained some points today, a top five here at Charlotte, a lot better than we ran here last year, and we'll, we'll move on to Dover. He said it, picked up points in the championship, Alan. That's a big deal. 21-point game specifically for Elliott Sadler, Dave, as Ricky Stenhouse Jr. finished in 26th position, and Sadler finished fifth, and they'll take that fight for the NASCAR Nationwide Series Championship on to Dover, Delaware, and the Monster Mile. That is next Saturday. You'll see it on ESPN at 1 Eastern time, then that... Newly resurfaced and super fast Michigan International Speedway here on ABC. The road course in Wisconsin, Road America, and more. Join us at the races, nascar.com slash tickets or the number on your screen. Big win in Charlotte for Brad Keselowski. He's in victory lane. We told you at the beginning of the show how this is a very important weekend for Penske Racing. Brad Keselowski gets the first win of the weekend for the team. I just spoke with Jeremy. He said those last 73 laps were the longest of his entire career. How were you able to stretch the fuel? 
Uh, well, I can't tell you that. You gotta tell us our secrets. Uh, no, I just uh, there's a strategy, and you know Penske Racing Engines, uh, they do a great job with fuel mileage on the Dodges, and uh, they deserve a lot of credit for it. You know, there's only so much you can do as a driver, and uh, a lot of it comes down to the car and, and what it needs. But uh, Benny didn't let me say Benny. I can tell you at the end, he was running pretty hard, and uh, I knew he was going to be tough, and both him and Kyle. So. Uh, they all did a great job, and I had a lot of fun racing them, but uh, thankfully we were able to save enough fuel and, and get what I think is one of the biggest wins of my career to win on Memorial Day weekend. And uh, what it means to me in this country, it's, uh, it feels great. I am going to remind you of a conversation that we had before driver intros where you said you were optimistic, but you were pessimistic that the car was just a little bit off. If I told you you'd be standing here at the end of the race, you would have said what? Well, I believe it. I mean, <laughs> you got to be optimistic, and you got to believe in your people, and uh, we're doing all we can with this nationwide program to bring in uh, the most talented people we can and continue to give them promotion through the cup and, and so forth and you know this program is our depth at Penske Racing and it's uh, it's great to see it for these guys uh, they deserve uh, to get some results and uh, and the future that beholds for them so I'm uh, proud to be a part of that in some way congratulations see you in the 600 guys Brad Kozlowski the winner we take a look at the final results while we get final thoughts from Hall of Famer Rusty Wallace and Andy Petrie. Well, I was pretty impressed with Kyle Busch's team I mean he was really down the first part of the year he's picked this thing up a good third place finish for that team he's got to be proud. Yeah you got to keep up the racetrack though Kevin Harvick had a dominant car early but kind of faded to the end. So Kozlowski wins for Roger Penske today here in Charlotte and tomorrow Penske's car with Ryan Briscoe aboard starts on the pole for the Indianapolis 500. Telecast presented by GoDaddy.com here on ABC starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Next Saturday, the Nationwide Series in Dover on ESPN. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC. A hot, grueling afternoon in Charlotte with the checkered flag and star-spangled celebration belonging to Michigan's Brad Kozlowski.